I wanna be the best in the game, invest in my name. Check no restraints, I'm obsessed with the pain. I ingest, I retain, assess and I change. Possessed by the thought I'll be free one day from society's restraints. Money, clout and fame, mud disease, a plague. We all love to hate, have to play the game, have to make a name. All our insecurities are on this display. This is war with the enemy. Think that it was meant to be. Living in a time where disease is on every screen. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Tactical Awareness. Uh, I am joined again by other hosts, Owen and Dan. As we move into the second part of our O12 guidebook um, in our Getting Into Infinity. So in this episode, you'll hear us break down all the profiles that were not covered in Starmada. Talk a little bit about what's going on with us, um, how the Tactical Awareness Winter War Tournament went. And try and just catch up on the week and what everyone's getting ready for. So let's uh, hear about what the boys have been doing and then get to talking about the pure superpower faction, vanilla faction, whatever you want to call it. For O12. Before we get too uh, much further into that, though, we're going to catch up with everybody and what a week we all had. Owen is divided. He has he has choices to make, which he hates. He's planning on going to a satellite tournament with Dan in a couple weeks. Uh, I just came back from Winter War, which was our first big event we ran for the podcast uh, and went over swimmingly. And I don't know what Dan's been doing, but it sounds like he was playing games all weekend on Saturday with his 12 to get ready for talking about in this podcast. So let's jump in first with uh, with Dan and hear what his weekend was like. And then we can we can talk on through his personal crisis, what army to play at uh, at Colder Than Carbonite. Uh, yeah, I actually got four games of Infinity in this week. Uh, two with Damn, son. And two with some deep set uh, just on the Saturday gaming. And so that's quite a bit. Uh and then we also decided uh, after Saturday um, that uh, that we were going to go to this uh, the satellite tournament. And then I'm like, "All right." But like, it was always going to happen. It was always going to yeah. happen. The more excited, the more excited you guys got about uh, Infinity, the more likely it was you're going to go to that uh, <laughs> that satellite tournament. So I'm glad you're going. I was like, I don't want to drive to Edmonton, but I want to play Infinity, but I don't want to drive to Edmonton. In the winter, nope. I drive to Edmonton from Calgary. Is I as as a person who's been inside a hundred and twenty car pile up on the highway between Edmonton and Calgary, and almost missed my flight back to Memphis because of it. Uh, I can I can can confirm that that's not the best the best place to be caught in a snowstorm. Yeah, not the best highway either. But uh, but anyways, we decided that, and now I'm just like, what on earth? How am how am I supposed to make two lists that cover five missions and all the other factions I got to play against and it's it's feeling a little overwhelming of like I have no idea what people play and I have no idea what models and jank or whatever that I'm going to be surprised by and I'm just going to have auto losses because I'm just ignorant to the game still which is fine but it's like I kind of want to know and so I've been like trying to read up on things and do whatever I'm like this is probably all useless but I'm just trying to get to know the mission and you're so deep in two. exactly the same paralysis owen was in before he went to adepticon where he's going to think everybody knows more than he does but actually everybody knows nothing it go go do you want it i'm gonna i'm gonna do something right now it's gonna make you feel better let's go to its tab on the corpus body website and let's go to community and let's go to event checker outer i think it's called event browser and then when is it february march where is it february, february than carbonite Let's look at the elos of all the people playing. I mean, everyone's about a thousand, 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 a thousand. Is that really a good way to do it? I mean, it means that how many tournaments have they played in this year since since October, right? If they've played they played ITS registered tournaments, they're gonna have some kind of elo. I'm not saying there's nobody here who doesn't, but there's lots that are below a thousand, and there's a few that are above a thousand. So there's probably gonna be a few players. There's gonna probably I was gonna say there's probably a few players that are super seasoned and super excited for this. And then a few players who are just going to be coming into it the exact same way you are. And what happens after that first random pairing with the Swiss system at the beginning, you'll be fighting in your weight class, Dan, and it won't matter. Everybody's going to be, everybody's going to just be there to have a good time. If you, if you don't do great in your first game, if you do do great in your first game, usually the experience levels after the first couple of rounds, you know, I want to win the whole thing. Oh, oh. Okay. Wait, uh, go back you and know, listen to our previous talk. So go back and listen to episode five. <laughs> yeah, about managing your expectations. There's only and... there's only three like janks left that you haven't had to deal with, Dan. It's uh it's a invisible man with a very good gun and a very good BS. And it's a five man murder you link team. Like a, a for realsies like night link team. 
Maybe it's just I, two. I played it on Tabletop Simulator. But luckily, he didn't know how to play, so I was able to survive. But otherwise, I probably would have died a horrible death. I mean, maybe. Those are the, those are the only two that I think I... because I Oh, and I guess uh, the other... The third of the three Speculo-type units. But the one that has the Emirat in Toha. Uh, the, yeah, the Janstar. The, the one that can kill you with a racer through the wall. <laughs> yes. One, he doesn't just he doesn't just impersonate in your half of the board and then melee you. He uses uh, stink bombs to explode your brain with Ferroware. That's a that's a whole other thing. When you start dealing with uh, symbio bombs that run Ferroware, um, and he, they can basically do like a, a a stink version of Trinity, but it affects non hackers. <laughs> you can just go up and like I don't know send the send the 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 candidu up the urethra and blow up someone's brain, <laughs> which is what I assume it is. I feel uh, violated. Yeah, it's it's not a. It, I mean. There's a reason I think why in the last couple of events Toha did really well. They're starting to become the submarine faction because they're they're kind of like French and Acon where the models haven't been available for a long time. And so people don't have a lot of experience against them. And it means Fairware is uh is kind of a rude awakening to certain people. I feel like yeah. uh, if I was gonna un- unpack my Toha army, I'd feel some due diligence to just tell everybody, like, hey, so this guy right here. <laughs> and and Do you know what the Toha means? doesn't play by the normal rules as their shtick. That was their issue in the previous edition. And yeah. it's apparently the same thing here. Where they're like, what if we give them an ability that no one else gets? It's like biohacking as opposed to like technical hacking. And then when we surprise people with it, it's because, well, you just got to learn the game. <laughs> also, the models aren't available. I mean, parts of them are. The Sparkle models are available, just not the... Um... A lot of the old Toa stuff, like the McCall, like a lot of a lot of the stuff that was pretty key, honestly, to the list is no longer available. Still key though. Yes. Well, that's when people start playing with their space marines and saying, "Infinity has a good proxy culture. It's the loosest of proxy culture. Use whatever you want all the time." <laughs> what space marine would you proxy as a McCall? Uh, one of the wolf ones, probably. Just straight up assault processor. Just a just just a space wolf. Just a space on a, wolf on a thirty-two. Armor. <laughs> on a thirty-two. That's right. No, no I put joke. him. I put him on the right size base. That'd be it. <laughs> and I'd paint him in <laughs> Uchin colors. Just to, just to fuck people. Paint him all orange. Just just take the proxy rules to its logical conclusion. He's from Pano. That's, That's why he's right. blue. Give him a cat girl head. <laughs> it's, then it's infinity. Three D prints of cat girl heads. Then it's infinity. No bats. <laughs> no bats. All right. So, oh, and get into your existential crisis. So, so you you want to take a faction of colder than carbonite? It's a satellite tournament. You're feeling pretty back in the saddle, from the sound of things. Feeling like you're shaking out a lot of your, like I didn't know what I didn't know was over the last few months. So, what's what's the what are the choices between? Uh, well, it's Hawk Islam, kind of full stop. They are my favorite faction, and so it it's going to be one of them. And then it's just a matter of which which version. The what flavor, the vanilla one, the one that has access to everything, the assassin one that has access to triple fide and double sunduk butt, or the Rama <laughs> that has double uh Magariba guard and every version of Link that you would want. Kapokalki is also a faction, <laughs> Kapokalki is also a playable army list within Hagaslam. Yeah. There's also <laughs> Kapokalki, they exist. <laughs> They, they are not just, one of the selections, unfortunately. They're, not one of the in this yeah. they're the they're, that's right, they're the dump stat of uh, Pakistan. Yeah. <laughs> you want to talk about a layover faction that like got uh, anyway, they're not a choice, so I'm not gonna talk about them. they're a legacy, they're a legacy faction. Yeah, they were they're one of the first. But yeah. uh but yeah, it's between the the it, it's really heavily between Rama and uh and then just the vanilla faction. I like the assassins, but I did play them at the last event that I played. Right. And I, I just don't give a shit about the Govad link. It's cool and it's better now, but I don't care. <laughs> I've done it too many times. It's fair. So now it good. becomes do you do I have access to all the toys of smaller in smaller amounts or a collection of my favorite ones in larger amounts? Right. That is kind of the rub. And that's a that's an interesting segue into I think tonight because that's what Dan's been feeling with O12 and Star Mata going back and forth and the difference between being able to kind of zhuzh up and power up smaller groups of some of your favorites versus just having that broad breadth of like, oh, I can just take 
all my favorites. I just can't have lots of them. Um, and, and whether or not that's kind of favorable either way in infinity. Cause alpha Zids in links are no joke. <laughs> alpha Zids are no joke period, but in links, you're right. It's a bit of a force first, multiplier. First four heavy rocket launcher with six cents PS 13 and armor five. And that's just an a Harris. Things. That's his Harris. Yeah. That's his Harris yeah. option. That's not even the good option yet. And he's still a mine layer. Oh yeah. Just cause he gets that too. And then he has an SMG as his off weapon. So you can't even sneak up on him. Nope. And six cents. So you super can't yeah, you sneak up on him. can't sneak up on him. Yeah, that's right. Yep. He I is no joke. Well, this sounds like an existential crisis that you're not going to get through in one episode of us talking right now. But I think you should. I think you should just. Do you have to register your list when you register for the event? You shouldn't have to. You should just be able to like subscribe and then pick which one later on. If in doubt, oops, I forgot. <laughs> when's the list lock is there like an announced list lock time in the little registration sheet it has yeah. a tab for select which faction you're playing um, but that's not the its sign up sheet so usually you don't yeah. have to do that until like you're you're closer to the day so if you're registered yeah. and you paid your ticket you shouldn't have to worry about it yet well i don't i don't think you have I, it, it's it's asking for your faction but I don't, you have to lock into it i don't think yeah well I mean, like I said, I just forgot. Just pay. Just pay and register. Yeah. And be fine. Here's my money, and I'll show up with a 300-point legal list. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Remember, if they say there's a list lock time, then you've still got a couple weeks. Yeah, yeah. I don't see you on here, though. I don't see you registered on the... I'm looking on the site right now. I don't see... I don't. Oh, is that Dan? Is Dan X4373? Is that you? Yeah, that's me. Okay, so... I have not registered yet. I, re I, I filled out their, like... They have, like, a website form to sign up. And then oh, it has I a see. link to the ITS event to also sign up. There are two levels of sign up. Multiple, multiple tiered signups. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, speaking of signups, uh, this weekend was Winter War. Um, we had 22 people registered, 21 showed up. So I did end up, unfortunately, having to uh, hustle a little bit and do some ringering which was a lot of work but nobody sat at a game i'm pretty proud of that uh the train was all fantastic uh rob aru uh, brought some um some tables as well which a huge thanks to him for and spud brought extra objective markers because spud's amazing uh and yes kevin spud did show up he had a great time he brought the most incredible uh i believe it was either foreign company or starco it was whichever one has the full a team <laughs> like it was incredible. He took the heads off of all of the Aristea characters for the A-team and sculpted giant chibi heads and hats and like a backdrop. It was so nice. I think it is Foreign Company. Uh, is it Foreign Company? Lacks me. Wild Bill, Hannibal, yeah. It was Foreign Company. Um, and he, and he like had such a great time. It was so nice to see his army. His army was so cool. Uh, and we went three rounds. Um, I saw people from all over the place. People came in from London. Uh, people came in from, I think, almost as far as Kingston, uh, Hamilton, Toronto. Uh, we had a guy coming in from Peterborough. It was fantastic. So we made all three rounds. Everybody cleaned up, helped me like put everything back in the car, stashed everything. Uh, prizes all got handed out. And overall, Jordan uh, from the Whip 12 podcast was our winner with Toha. Uh, he went 3-0. Three, three over the course of the day uh and actually played me in game three <laughs> and i had i did not bring an army because i i didn't think there's going to be a drop because we were pretty rock solid going in and then i so i played with the yu ching army that i was giving away i just made a list on the spot on my phone and was like okay no one's getting a buy y'all paid y'all paid to be here you're all gonna get three games in um and I got to play three games with a vanilla Yu Ching list, which actually I think has made me fall back in love with playing uh, non-sectorial factions. I did not miss Link Teams once. I played against Link Teams all three games, uh, or Fire Teams all three games. And um, yeah, I think uh, I think I'm going to give it a go with the no Fire Teams again and play some of the the superpower hyperpower factions instead of playing the uh the sectorials for a bit i really enjoy playing my ossss but i think if i play alif i can i can cherry pick some some fun models so i'm excited to get to my overview of the factions because i think there's going to be some so i'm gonna when i make up my mind about certain units probably as we go through and like relook at them and stuff like that 
So anyway, it was a good weekend. I was shattered afterwards. So I took Monday off, uh, relaxed a little bit, and then got right back to it. I've got all the terrain and boards and table toppers and everything all packed now. So like the infrastructure is all done and this should be a lot easier when we run them again in April. Uh, and it was really gratifying to get all the nice messages from everybody on the way home, just thanking me for having a good time. And then today we've got 23 signups already for um, Spring Offensive. So if you're planning on going to Spring Offensive, get your tickets paid because it's filling up fast. I, I've increased the, the the event size from 20 to 30. We like stretched the 20 the first time around. Uh, we should be able to do 30, no problem with everyone who's volunteered to bring extra tables. Um, but we're, we're, I mean, it's three days since the last event and it's not, it's three months away and we're, we're like paid through with almost two thirds. There's a third that's already paid another 13, I think registered. Um, and yeah, it filled up super fast. So everybody had a great time and apparently they told their friends. I'm excited for the one in April. Awesome. Yeah. It sounds like it was really good. Um, you can check out the pictures on the Facebook page or in the discord because we posted lots of updates while we were there. So it is time to talk about this superpower faction. Um, and I've actually played a little mini ITS dojo uh, with uh, Chase using vanilla 12. So I'm interested to hear what you think about it, uh, Dan. Um, we'll use the same format as before. And again, a, a front loading warning. We're going to use some of the subtypes and types in conversation again that are from the previous episodes. Um, so if you haven't listened to episodes one through seven, you should probably jump in and listen to them because they'll give you some more context. And what, what episode number did I say this was? It's episode eight, I'm pretty sure, isn't it? Yeah, this is eight. So uh, let's jump in to O12. And boy, howdy, do you get a lot more profiles playing O12 than you get playing um star mono yeah it's it's kind of weird because there's not multiple sub sub or sectorials whatever and so you just have like there's a star mono which gives you like two or three unique profiles that o12 doesn't have and you go back to o12 and you're like oh my god the world is my oyster <laughs> then so i was just looking at the models that i had or i was interested in playing and i found like 18 but mm -hmm. uh, you counted it all up, and it was what thirty something. Uh thirty-two. You get thirty-two additional profiles, including all the mercenaries. The mercenaries tend to be subject to change a little bit, um, but those are usually named characters like Ada, the Beast Hunter, the Cube Jagger, um, or Jaeger, the Monstructor, and um, Motorized Bounty Hunter, uh, and the Trip Hammer. I believe are the ones that are your. Oh, and Lian K actually as well. Lian K is a um, mercenary ninja who will hang out in your faction for 21 points. And the diggers. Oh, yeah, and diggers, that's true. And you've been using diggers recently, too. Yep. So that's an interesting one to get to talk about. So do you want, let's go by, by classification again, uh, if you want to go through all these new profiles. And do you want to start with gunfighters? Who's new for O12 between the... So the gunfighters we had from um, Star Model looking at last week's list, we had the Absalons, the Beta Troopers, Zetas, Okos... Um, the Knight of Santiago is not in this list, right? He's only available in Star Mata, but you still have Hector, uh, you have Shona, the Cyclops, the Nyokas, the Bronzes, and Bishi. Bishi's actually not in this one either. There's no Bixie in this one. Nope. So who do you get uh, instead and on top of? All right, we're just bringing up my note. Uh, the Omega is a big one. Yeah, the Omega is no joke. <laughs> so who's the Omega and what does he do? Uh, basically, he's just a uh, decent amount of points. You get some minus six and access to a uh, big gun. And so he's... And, we, and he's got two wounds. Yeah, he's a, he's a heavy infantry. Arm 4, BTS 3, min minus six and immune to shock. Um, he's BS 14 too, which is which is pretty high for your faction, actually. I think it's higher than the uh, the Gammas. I think the Gamma's only 13, isn't he? Oh, no, he's 14, too. He's 14 as well. Um, yeah. But you also have a couple of specialist profiles and you have a tin bot profile too, which I think are probably worth talking about. Um, and instead of having like a, a sidearm, you have a heavy riot stopper when you take a multi-rifle. So there's five multi-rifle profiles, two that are lieutenants, one with a tin bot and a heavy riot stopper. So you do kind of have like a mid-range gunfighter too, on top of a and, a, and a lieutenant option on top of the ever popular HMG that came in the, I believe it was in the um, wildfire box. For my time. 
Yeah, it's the one that while well, you've you the models I gave you are from that box. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> uh, so this guy this guy's got yeah. some downsides, I think, though. He he doesn't have courage, even though he's whip 14. So he does duck sometimes, which means if you want him to be suppressing, um, and he loses a suppression gunfight uh because he fights someone with the visor, or someone just gets lucky, he can fall down on his face a little bit or be pushed back from feeling a guts check and loses suppression. It's just something people don't think about all the time. And he's only BTS three, and you're paying kind of a premium cost for some of his BTS three. So it is, it is if you're considering taking him as a midfielder or a mid range gun fighter, it's kind of worth taking that ten bot because then that boosts his um, BTS to a minimum of five. Because if you hit with uh, AP ammo, it'll have the two, and then add the three for the firewall cover. That is a good point. Yeah, what, what I like, I, I think I like the multi rifle on him with the high B riot stopper, and then if you have the point, grab the tin bot. Yeah, it, I mean, it's too bad the tin bot one isn't also a forward observer because if you get the forward right. observer tin bot, he'd be like the total package, but you only get one or the other. You get either the lieutenant option with a firewall, a firewall option, or a forward observer option. You can't combine all three of those, which would be too good. <laughs> 42 points. <laughs> Um, yeah, he, he's really cheap for what he is because he kind of doesn't have any of, of like a lot of extra special rules. He's kind of just bare bones, solid model, which yeah. I kind of like. Yeah, he, he needs to be a bully piece though and bully weaker models. He doesn't want to get in fight with something like an intruder uh, or anybody with like a longer range gun and MSV, right? So if he gets yeah. outranged by an MSV sniper, even if he's got his HMG or if he's in suppression during a turn, and you range him, he can tend to, to fall apart kind of quick because he really leans in that mimetism. He's one of those weird cases where his armor is higher than his BTS. <laughs> Usually if your armor is four, your BTS six, but not in this case. Yeah, I actually haven't played with him yet, but I do have a local player that is willing to sell me a model that he has an extra of, and I just haven't got around to grabbing it from him yet. So it's all theory hammer from here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so who else? Who else makes this list? Uh, you mentioned the Gamma. Uh, the Gamma's in Star Mod, though, isn't he? Nope. Oh, really? I did not <laughs> realize he wasn't in Star Mod. I thought he was for some reason. Well, then tell me about the Gamma. Uh, the Gamma is like your mini tag. He's move 6 2, no wounding cap, two wounds, arm 6, BTS 6. And he has either a Fear Box or Heavy Machine Gun, and he's got plus one burst on his BS tags. Yeah, and this guy doesn't care about shock and courage, and it's just yeah. This guy's the guy who goes, uh, yeah. You lean on your mimetism there, there, there. No courage, <laughs> no wounding gap guy. I'm just going to be plus two armor and plus three BTS and an extra effective wound for to keep me standing up. Yeah, and you're only paying an extra ten points for all that stuff. Yeah, it's like nine ten points to to make him that that tough. I really like the gamma. Um, I've used him quite a bit as an ARO piece of the HMG. The fear box, no joke though, man. That thing, you, you just you gotta have him like on his face or protected somehow in the reactive turn. But in the active turn, he is a sledgehammer with that fear box. Yeah, the fear box seems really fun, especially because you just you get the plus one burst to offset the the just base because like, burst two, right? Normally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So burst three fear box seems real fun, and burst five HMG. I mean, that was. Yeah. Uh, if you're if you're just looking to win, like you're not going to crack heavy armor with it necessarily because you're going to win the fights, but you're not necessarily going to get through the armor with it if it's like a tag and cover or something like that. But you'll win a lot of fights with the burst five HMG. Just and it can then suppress too, right? It can throw itself into um, a defense mode and, he's and also lean into arm six. Yeah, he's PS fourteen. So chuck in five days of PS fourteen. I mean, them's Zeta numbers. <laughs> That's your 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 Zeta at that point. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he's cool. I was using him at the beginning and then I leaned away from him because I was trying to bring like more diverse, like cheaper models. But I, I'm really looking at him again. I was like, maybe I bring him instead of the Zeta because I was like thinking the Zeta in some of the missions could be mm -hmm. good. And of course, the Zeta has climbing plus and can be anywhere, everywhere. And he's got that advantage. But uh, but the Gamma seems pretty cool. Like when you he's a budget. discount Zeta for sure. Yeah. Okay, who else? Um. For like just long range gunfighters, yeah, or well, uh, just gunfighters in general, short, medium, long, like whoever whoever gets in fights with guns. Uh, I was thinking maybe the the razor. Okay, who's he? I guess he's kind of more of a midfielder, but well, you, uh, you got some mercenaries too. 
You got a bunch of mercenary gun fighters. You got Wild Bill. You got Armand. You got Nauf. You got Octavia. Oh, Nauf. Definitely Nauf. <laughs> okay, tell me about Nauf. Who's Nauf? Nauf is basically the same cost as our Epsilon, but uh, he gets a plus one burst sniper rifle for minus one MSB and losing conning plus. But he's got train total, which means sometimes he's got super jump. Mm-hmm. I actually had a game on Saturday where he was jumping from terrain to terrain. <laughs> just like it was like it was so fun. It was just like um so he like sneaks out, kills some guys over here, the other thing like clears the way, and then just like chop up, boom, boom, boom. And he's just like just hopping around the terrain on the other board. I felt like I was cheating. I was like, what is this game? It reminds <laughs> me of playing the the Halo sniper levels. Remember where you would like jump across the board with sniper rifles and just like drive nails across the board at each other. There was some Halo map that was like that. I remember everything was super jumping everywhere and firing the giant like Barrett 50 cal sniper rifle in that game. It's just nice because uh, you can keep him back pretty far. If he's got the, the super jump, you, you can see who he needs to see, although you're discounting your cover if you're jumping up to see somebody. He but, is a great, uh, a great piece for active turn removing things like TR bots from outside their optimal range, right? Yeah. Um, you know, like standing up fire team, Guys with a 32 inch range band, he's a really, really good like peace hunter for removing those arrow threats. If anyone's standing up, he's more than happy to make them sit back down. Yeah, triple triple topping a, a DA round into people with tons of mods against him. Because if he's outside of optimal range, you're looking at probably a minus nine cover mimetism and his uh, whatever the range mod is for the gun that's shooting at him. And then he'll be plus three, ignoring at least three mimetism. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And his gun just comes with shock, which is nice. Oh yeah, built in all shock. of his guns have built-in shock. Yeah, he's. uh I've been. Oh, was like I don't use now. I have an extra now. Here's a now. I was like, ooh, let's try that. Oh my god, I love him. Yeah, definitely, definitely a, a, a must-have piece. Uh, and he's got stealth. I mean, he's normally long range, but in case like there's somebody like hunting you or whatever, you can like run away a little bit easier. Yep. And for a premium, you can have other Nauf, <laughs> Armand Lamut, the freelance killer. Uh, he's the Toha mercenary. Yeah, so I just looked at his profile. It's I'm I'm confused of what he what he's supposed to be doing because he's a sniper, but he's also like close combat y. <laughs> Yeah, you can make him you can make him a hunter profile. For 38 points, you get him with the same multi-sniper rifle, but he's also got mines, mine layer, breaker pistol, and a shot close combo weapon. So what he's doing there is he's going with his breaker pistol with three burst and using that mimetism minus six. Um his CC attack maybe. I mean he's natural born warrior with a CC attack. He can oh, use his I pistol and realize melee. he had min minus six. Yes. And his That's burst mods good. work in his burst mods work in active turn in melee. So this breaker pistol, I'm pretty sure, works in active turn and with burst two. Yeah, I guess it's breaker pistol plus because it's burst. not it's not BS attack plus one burst. It's breaker pistol plus one burst. So he goes into melee and he gunfights twice. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, so half BTS melee shots at CC twenty one. <laughs> it's pretty great. Um, and natural born warrior, so you're turning off other people's um, melee. So he doesn't have like he's got you know some decent damage because the pistol will be damage 13 from CC attack plus one damage. Uh he's using a CC 21 and he's gonna go fight you with natural born warrior, or you've got basically other nauf, which is multi-sniper rifle, nano pulsar, breaker pistol plus one burst, MSV one. Um, so he's got the MSV then and he sets back. He doesn't have that super jump, but he has forward deployment all the time. If you want to do that hunting piece, and then he can also sit back with that sweet min minus six. He basically trades the no super jump in this edition for an extra wound, right? Because he's got transmutation and he goes, he loses his armor and BTS, but his symbiote armor falls off when he takes his first wound. Um, and he's also got a better mimetism stat overall. But you're paying 39 points for him. He's a he's a premium long range hunter or weirdly good CC hunter. Totally, yeah. Um, I'll have to look into him. Uh, I guess I guess there's Cuervo as well. Uh, Cuervo, yes. Cuervo, the most interesting uh, Delta in the world. Uh, so tell me about Cuervo. Uh, parachute combat jump is 13. 
but then he's got either a submachine gun or a boarding shotgun with uh, martial arts level four and no wounding cap, just one wound, immunity shock, but he's also got a beautiful monofilament CC weapon. Sure or a does. DACC weapon. Yep. It means he can hurt objectives and stuff too with the DA. Yeah, so I just found goes, that out. Yeah, that's was, a big deal. Having any material is a big deal with the CC guy. I was playing and I was like, I don't have any, any material, but I played a bunch of booties and I was like rolling booty. And I, like, I got a DACC. But yeah, I got a, I got a, I can complete objectives now. So yeah, yeah no so that's, that's useful, especially because you can drop down beside it. I think the problem is he's actually priced out by his parent unit though, because <clears throat> he's 43 points for the boarding shotgun um, or for 39 for the acrylic can and the deltas themselves kind of fill that same gunfighter role or like utilitarian mid midfield role and they're like For 20 sure. something points <laughs> like the deltas are actually really cool which means you should probably talk about them they're more of a midfield piece but um they might cross over into into gunfighting uh, yeah, the other one i was I, looking at was wild bill yeah i don't get it i was like i look at him and he doesn't seem to look good at all but maybe he's people seem to think he's good so uh, please explain well, he has marksmanship, so, you know, no cover. Um, all of his guns are plus one damage, plus one, and plus shock. He's dodged plus three, so he dodges on 14s. He's got no wound in cap. Um, and he can fire a rifle <laughs> and a multi-pistol with plus one burst. So if you get him within eight, he's horrifyingly good because he's got a damage 13, like, burst three multi-pistol. Now that ignores cover, so he's plus three to hit, ignore cover, shock, AP maybe. Or, pl- or two shots DA and then shock and plus one damage um, or he's just got a rifle so he's a and he's cheapest chips right like 22 points for a kind of premier up close gunfighter 6-2 uh, he's just looking to like bully the, the crap out of like cheap midfield pieces so you send him to go hunt down mm, I don't know midfield hackers because he's not hackable Right, so you just send him on his merry way to go to go hunt down stuff that might hit him with um, hacking programs or other other like uh, anti heavy infantry stuff. I think Wild Bill is really cool and has a role. I don't think Wild Bill is really cool with a role in O twelve because there's like four or five other people that will do his job and also, yeah, like Wild Bill is not much different than just a gangbuster or Shona. But right. the gangbuster is, is also more. well. The gangbusters are cheaper too, and they're like yeah. infiltrating with mad traps and visors and and like, okay, you lost out on the extra damage and uh, and having the the multi aspect of those pistols, but you got an SMG, and most of the time, whatever you were going to shoot with that multi pistol does not like the AP of an SMG anyway. Absolutely. So I, I he's really cool. I don't know why you'd bring him in AO12, other than if you really liked him, because he definitely, like you just described, he has all of those jobs and, and is like a competent model. But I think there's other factions that like him way more. Kind of like you, Ariadna. <laughs> yeah. And kind of like Cuervo, he's just kind of priced out by other things in the faction. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's other things that are just cheaper and slightly better at the jobs um, for the same price value. I feel the same way about the Omega, on, honestly, in the Gamma. I think the Gamma is probably just slightly different but better omega um because it doesn't have that weak weakness of leaning on mimetism yeah if you could pick to always fight ariadna <laughs> you just play the omega every time <laughs> that's right every single time just have an yeah, ariadna, ariadna list there you go dan don't worry about the scenario just have <laughs> ariadna and not ariadna that's right <laughs> the diva is another one that comes to mind as a mid-range fighting piece because you've got a diva that's got sensor triangulated fire and you got another one with a spitfire msv2 they're an interesting one because you only get one of them, um, but they fill a bunch of different roles. The sensor one's kind of cool as like a midfielder, same with the hacker, but that MSV2 Spitfire for 33 points, I don't think you have access to that anywhere else. Uh, no. And it's Team yeah. Rocket. I mean, the, the Epsilon does it for the Eps- the Epsilon's- basically the same price, but also has mimetism no and a better though. BS. Has a, has a shock mean, marksman. Shock marksman is still pretty cool. HMGs and multi snipers are pretty cool too. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm just trying. I'm just thinking of something that, that you don't have access to that is slightly different in this one, right? Uh, there's Octavia. Yeah. Octavia, I don't really understand. I think Octavia <laughs> makes a great beast hunter proxy. 
That's what I would probably use her as. Because the Beast Hunter, I do see a role for, but a Burst 2 Missile Launcher with 6 cents dogged, uh, it was like a 28.1.5 SWC throwaway arrow piece. Maybe but it has to be active, because you're not getting the Burst. I know, but arrow. like... Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, Missile Launchers aren't great active turn models. Um... And she's got no way of like getting to somewhere. So you're kind of just standing her up on high ground and hoping she has like an opportunity target, I guess. She's not able to hide anywhere. Yeah, I don't, I don't like her. Yeah, I don't really like her either. But she does, like I said, make a great beast hunter proxy. And the beast hunter is great. And it's great because it is insanely cheap for nine points with AP mines, a heavy flamethrower, and a panzer fest. That's why she makes a great po- uh, proxy because she's got a panzer fest basically like model on her and if you want to spend 15 points you also get camouflage forward deployment surprise deck minus three heavy flamethrower panzer first ap minus pistol da close count weapon and there's cc attack plus two damage min minus three natural born warrior uh religious troop stealth super jump and terrain total for nine points if you want to just take the basic one uh they are in a regular order sure <laughs> But I mean, sure. They're very, for nine very strong points, in regular order. Yeah, for nine points. Uh, I mean, it's basically just a better Libertos. And you put this guy in a gunfighter role? Yeah, because he's got a... You, you can potentially have him with a um, uh, a Panzerfaust uh, coming out of camouflage to surprise attack in forward deployment. So you just go have him creep up on something and, and fire Panzerfausts into it. I guess Panzer Pals are risky because one died, but surprise attack is real nice. That's right. Yeah. Or an ARO piece gunfighter, right? Where it's like a surprise. Like, is that a mine? Well, maybe it's a mine. Maybe it isn't a mine. It's the kind of thing you kind of want to pair up with someone who is mine layer, then not use their mine layer skill and stick gotcha. him next to it. And then they think they're going to go fight a mine and they're actually going to fight a beast hunter who shows up with a heavy flamethrower and just nukes them. Yeah, heavy flamethrowers are no joke. I lost a yeah. tag to a heavy flamethrower. That's what I'm. Th- that's what I mean, right? Like, imagine you're walking to within just outside of eight to go try and spot a mine, and all of a sudden that mine transforms to a heavy flamethrower, and and surprise attacks you, or you know, just shoots you out of cover. Now, does, is surprise attack also in the ARO turn? No, it's not. It's only an active turn. Okay, but still, yeah. Okay. I do. I, I do like the beast hunter. Now. Yeah, I do like the beast hunter. Um, I think it. I think it holds a role as a uh, as a gunfighter. The Lynx, the Lynx is actually kind of neat because they have a ton of like gunfighter potential, um, but they also have some kind of crossover because they can be specialists and hackers. Have you played yeah. with the Lynx yet? There's no model for it yet. I don't think. Yeah, yeah, I got, I got two Lynx. Is there a model for the Lynx? I must have it. Yeah, somewhere. there's Lynx Razor and Cybercop come in the the beta whatever oh box. i do have it yeah i do have that box yeah so i was i was really enjoying the links and uh i was bringing them just as they kind of just hang out as camel markers so i still get their orders and then when they get close they can like come out surprise attack and they got me minus six uh they can be hidden deployment so they can just completely be gone and you can either give them a sniper rifle or a you just you mid-range Kind of the plasma rifle. Plasma rifles. Rifle it's a carbine, so it's only two shots. But plasma it's, carbine. That's what it is. It's a neat profile. It, what's nice is their specialist troop as well, and mm-hmm. so you can go around, push a button, and then hide behind a corner, go camouflage, and it's like really hard to root them out. Yeah, hidden deployment, but no infiltration is interesting though, because yeah. you can't stop up table, right? It's just you kind of don't have to reveal it in the beginning. I think like with maybe a sniper rifle. Uh, you can like pu- put them up on some higher ground or covering a fire lane, and then if someone's like, "Oh yeah, no one's looking down this," right? You're like, "Nope," and then they come in, walk out in the open, and then hopefully they do it on a second move, come out in the open or something like that, and then you can just get a free sniper shot on them, or just during the active turn, then just surprise that there's a sniper, and then all those people that were hanging out or the TR bots that are out of range, you, know, mm-hmm. you can take out. He feels like a good pocket um, weak flank piece too. This is a trick that Owen used to do to me with um, his hidden deployment um, order sergeants back when they used to be before they were called uh, Trinitarians. There used to be just these like hidden deployment order sergeants. 
And there'd be one flank that kind of looked like it didn't have anything in it. And you might go park like your fire team or like your advancing pieces. And it's kind of like a pretend weak flank. And these guys would come at a hidden deployment during that. Maybe second player goes second active turn and start laying mines all around you or ambush you with their breaker combis or combis or whatever it was. These look like a good candidate for that, right? Because they're armed with some some pretty fun mid-range shooting pieces, like a shock marksman rifle, a breaker rifle, and a plasma carbine. All of those are really cool, like, disruption weapons for fighting in, like, that 16-inch band. And then, like, assault pistols, shock mines, right? Like, a cyber oh, yeah, mines. I forgot about the assault rifle. pistol. Yeah, yeah, on the plasma carbine profile, you get the assault pistol. And so you're like come around a corner, surprise shot, assault pistol, like, well, good luck. Well, it shoots and, around and corners, six. right? That plasma carbine, I'm pretty sure, has an impact template, doesn't it? Yes, also that. So so you're shooting around corners at fire teams, right? If there's one fire team member, you know what I mean, everybody else is stacked along behind him on the corner, you're you're doing a lot of damage shooting around towards with that template. You do only get burst two, though, so it gets a fire team ARO, it kind of is rough. Yeah, burst but... two with min minus six, surprise, and cover. <laughs> I guess that is neg 12. Though. That's neg 12, right? <laughs> if you're inside 16 and they're not, you're probably not giving them a lot of opportunity to hit you back. Don't worry, they'll crit me. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> well, you know who's not going to crit you is the three not responding fire team members behind um, that get splashed by that thing. Like that's, that's I think, the, the opportunity there, right? There's the, that corner shooting with a template to um, to create like that disruption in like, a big group of models. And because O12 doesn't have a whole lot of saying. other template stuff, when you have it hidden and they're looking at your list, they won't be necessarily looking for that either. Mm -hmm. That's right. Do any missile launchers? Good. Nope. That's all. <laughs> any, any template weapons? Nope. That's right. Nope. Not I think you this know guy about. does a good job to compete with Nav and Armand. Yep. Absolutely. Basically the same points as them, but the advantage that he gets over them is you don't have to place him. So like when you play against people, like you deploy first, for example, you either are forced to keep Knopf as your reserve, in which case there's almost certainly a single spot that's good for him to be at. So you just deploy in response to it. And that means that you can't keep your Omega in reserve. You can't keep your Alpha in reserve. You can't keep like all the other things that would be the, the hunting pieces. Whereas this guy, you just... I, I'm turn around. I'm going to deploy some models. And uh, now you have this sniper always in your back pocket. And if they have a TR bot, if they have an HMG, if they have their own sniper, just come out of camo and shoot them at at least minus 12, probably worse than that. Because you'll bad range them with surprise attack, with mimetism. Like, that's pretty good. Yeah, I like that a lot. I think I'd probably take wrong. one of each. I'd probably, I'd probably take the plasma and the sniper rifle and have one, have one of each because like that's a sixty point investment for a lot of board coverage, covering the midfield and covering the um, the long range avenues. Like go insane. Now, when you come out of hidden deployment, do you come out as a camo marker or do you get to yep. choose? Yeah, if you marker. move as your first skill, you come out as a marker. Oh, that's great. Oh yeah, yep. and you use your own order, not the own order from the pool. Right. Right. Cool. And then uh, I also don't hate I don't, the hacking, the killer hacker profile, just because he's whip 14. Definitely. And he's going to break her combi. That's actually not a bad, like, tag hunter at me at inside HMG range, right? Because he's, he's winning them on half BTS. And the killer hacking device means he can use something like um, Cybermask to get himself to where he wants to be. There's also something to be said for being able to cyber mask when there's sensors around because this is such a like sensor bot rich season where there's going to be tons and tons of those free tack aware toolbox bots floating around and you can't get censored out of impersonation. So if he really needs to hide, it doesn't lose his mimetism or anything like that. And he still gets a surprise deck if he comes out of it. So there's really no reason to go back into um, anything other than cyber mask once he's uh, revealed. Because you're, you're kind of immune to sensors then. That's a good point. And and you can keep him hidden deployment and surprise hack, killer hack somebody. Yeah, and mind bullet somebody. Although cyber mine, but they only go off against hackers, right? Yeah. So it'll just be like, hey, it's what you could pretend it's a dude. <laughs> no, but sure. you have to lay it. There's no mine layer. So there's no mine layer. No. So yeah, anyway, it's it 
It's a cool profile. I really like them. I wish you could have three. <laughs> if you could have three, I have one of each. And I have one of each except for the shock marks on rifle. I'd probably have the hacker, the multi sniper, and the um plasma carbon. And that's actually only 92 points. Like they're relatively inexpensive for their versatility and what they can do. I hope there's a sectorial for O12 in the future where I can have three of these guys because they're one of my favorite units. Also BS13, which is no joke. Oh yeah. Puts you in the upper half. Yep. Definitely. Do you have anything else for uh gunfighters? Gun fighters? Um I went through beast hunters, went through lynxes. Uh really just a crossover piece and the trip hammer. The trip hammer is technically a gunfighter, but oh yeah, I actually have them on my list too. <laughs> That's right. Tell me about the trip hammer. So I've experimented with the trip hammer recently because I uh I'm just proxying uh some uh some model I got off the internet and printed. Um but it looks like looks like a trip hammer, I guess. Whatever. Uh <laughs> they're widely different in the box that's coming out. So you could be whatever the heck you want. But it's a tag, it's a cheap tag. And it's uh it's got three wounds like all tags do, but it gets significantly worse on its last wound. It goes to like armor four and then... Yeah, it goes to battle ravaged. Yeah, so battle ravaged is like meh. But what's cool is you can pick like a fifty two point version of it where you get a Panzerfaust, a flam and sprain, and heavy shotgun. And so mm-hmm. you have two disposable weapons that are like heavy machine gun range. Uh and then it's like which is fine. And they're plus one blast in active turn. So you're really shooting your whole ammo of Panzerfaust in one. But two, two bla- first two Panzerfausts are no joke. So that's fun. Um, but otherwise, it's just, just cheap tag. You know, run around the board, do things. I like them. You can also take bigger weapons on them. But I, I think I like taking them as like a heavy infantry and just kind of taking some hits and uh, being a, a, a tag threat without actually being that crazy of a threat mm-hmm. i was going to use my investment. old my old original salamandra or my old original lizard or it maybe it was the iguana whatever the lizard whatever the two nomad tags we're going to use one of them as my trip hammer because it kind of looks like an old elderly you know kind of tag <laughs> but i do like that i like what you're talking about with the heavy shotgun it's only 52 points for attack aware um and no swick. attack plus one damage no swick and the Panzerfaust and Flamish Spears are plus one damage. So it's not nothing. <laughs> I mean, it's, and it is booty, which means, you know, someday you might roll that, that sweet, sweet, um, uh, what should we call it? Um, min minus six for it. I did that. Get... I did it. Did you I got really? Min minus six. I walked up, I got heavy flamethrower, and I burned to death. <laughs> As you say, that or you find a tag motorcycle and become move eight four. <laughs> you grow yeah, melee that legs. That would also be awesome. No, that's what my diggers always get. I like that. Boys. I like that you get BS tag plus one burst if you're a tag. There's like a thing where your tags only get certain things, but total immunity on tag would be cool. Getting total immunity on tag would be neat. It's it's not a it's I mean it's a cool it's a cool different profile. Mm-hmm. It, it, I don't think there's much here that you can't just get with the the gamma, right? For like the same points, you're just taking the gamma. True. The gamma's got better BTS, almost the same armor, better BS, a better gun. <laughs> um. Yeah, not tack aware, so not double orders, but eh, I don't know. The AP Spitfire is neat. The chain colt, that's probably the one most people would take. I don't, there's something to be said too for the zero BTS or the C, zero SWC um, heavy shotgun in Mark 12. Yeah, that's, that's 63 points. So then you're getting a little more expensive. Yeah, you're getting into like, <clears throat> why am I taking this? Yeah. But uh, I've had fun with it. I don't think I've regretted taking it ever. It's been able to like, it usually dies when it gets to a gunfight, but at least right. it's like it takes it. It sucks up a bunch of orders until it dies. Well, I do have one more that you probably haven't thought of, and that's the Daikinis. Mm-hmm. You can get two Daikinis now, twelve, uh, which means you can also rem racer them to make them BS twelve. Uh, they're arm zero, BTS three, but they're remotes. They're min minus three, immune to shock, remote presence, courage, and they can have an HMG. A multi sniper, a grenade launcher, a paramedic, or a combi rifle. And the HMG is only one SWC and 21 points, so, which means you can rem race him, Evo pot him, and have a min minus three HMG just running around the table, ready to get fixed by Pervati at any time, um, running and gunning, and probably not dying during any engagements because you got to kill him a whole bunch of times to have him actually stay dead. 
I guess with remote presence, yeah, you got that extra dead extra level point, unconscious, yeah, which is and, like a more a lot more likely that you're going to be sticking around on the ground. And he's kind of disposable because he's 21 points, so you just load him up with all the I'm my marksmanship, I'm mimetism, I'm burst four, I'm BS 12, and just even don't even take the rem racer. I like the rem racer because it combines jobs. But you can just send that guy out to go fight. It's a bit more set up than in, in Aleph, um, because you don't necessarily take the fuzzbot with Evo. Um, but because he's a remote, he can do all those same tricks they left do. He just can't be in a big link. No. Uh yeah, I have tried him out one just as a proxy, and I had him have him as a heavy machine gun and I he was behind a building and I forgot about him. But <laughs> this was on tabletop simulator. So, right. But uh no, because like the Kappa also. For one switch and 20 points, can he get a heavy machine gun with one better BS? But then you can't buff him up and he doesn't have the mimetism. He doesn't It'd be same BS because he'd be BS 12 from the um, Rem Racer, who's also your hacker doing your spotlights. Oh, I see. Wait, Rem Racer. Is that another profile you bring with? Like, is that a, I'm confused. Rem Racer is the um, multi role hacker that can up your remotes um and can also be a hacker profile do you just want to talk about the rem racers right now did i not talk about them already we we mentioned them we mentioned did we them go, did we go through them? i don't think we did wait, wait yeah we okay. did didn't we i think we did we didn't talk about we, his gunfighters we, i think i talked about the, something else we did before the show Oh, before the show. This is in the pre-show. <laughs> That's why I'm forgetting, because I was like, I already talked about these guys. Well, they're they're in a support choice. Um, but yes, the basic thing is you can upgrade your remotes uh, in, in O12 as a support choice. So let's talk about midfielders then, because I think that's it. Okay. I don't have anything else. Did you have anything, Owen, on your gunfighter list? Oh, no, that's everybody. That I guess lost. you could say Hippolyta. Yeah, you, you could say Hippolyta. Yeah, yeah, she, she can get there. Mim minus six, breaker combi rifle, eclipse grenades to get her there. 40 points of. I think she's pricey. I think in the right scenario, in the right kind of thing, she's quite good. But in general, she's maybe a bit too expensive for her point. Yeah. For what she's going to do because she can just die before doing her job. Right. The impetuous uh, really puts her, puts her weight yeah. down. I was about to say that. Impetuous means you can't never benefit from cover. So even though she's got armor three, which is decent, she'll never get cover. And so if someone gets a line on her or an enemy midfielder gets a line on her, she's got one eclipse dodge. But if that fails, then goodbye. So she's falling more into that midfielder role with her grenades and her close count weapon. I think so. Or she doesn't care about the cover. The mimetism is to get her there. Gotcha. Okay. Well, then she can lead off our talk about midfielders because <laughs> that feels like where she kind of squarely falls. She's yeah, a she's really cool. Hyper expensive her. midfielder though, but she's just really expensive. It, it just that's the only. It's just like she's got all this stuff. Yeah, mimetism and everything. And it, when she hits, she hits really well. But again, you're only getting one die. Um, so if you just got to be hitting people who don't also have close combat bonuses to make mm-hmm. it more assured. Uh, she's got berserk. So when you really want something to die, she can go in and try to blow it up because she's got explosive. But if something has high armor, you're just kind of rolling the dice there. The problem with Berserk, though, is she needs line of fire to use Berserk at the start of her order. And so she can't get in there with Eclipse grenades, I don't think. Yeah, you'd have to well, dodge. The, yeah, you, you can... The way I see it is you you reactive turn have smoked and they have moved up on you and now the smoke goes away because you didn't die. Mm-hmm. And you walk and in Berserk. Impetuous, impetuous Berserk. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Or what happened in one of my games versus Owen was I she was on the ground leaning out, and then her body sent in one of her little bots uh, to fix her up, and then she's like, and then the view bot got just shot by like thirty things and exploded. But then and then uh, and then she he was like, I can berserk somebody, and sad person's gonna die, and then they didn't die, and it was really sad. <laughs> giving her two wounds she didn't use to have two and she used to be one wound no wound in cap has been a big glow up for her because she yeah, has that bit nice. of ablative cushion to get in there and she's armed three bts3 she's effectively heavy infantry but she's a war band so she's like an unhackable heavy infantry murder piece that can gun nano pulse flash pulse and fight like premier pieces in melee 
I mean, if, if you're it willing just... to pay 40 points for our mod, pay 40 points for Hippolyta. It's it's another I'm just gonna fight you kill piece, but this one does it at like 16 inches. Yeah. Yeah, because she's got that uh impetuous move too, and she's six two, which is nice. It's no joke being six two because that first move being six inches lets her use her berserk and lets her use her um super jump. Her super jump and stuff as well. Yeah. Built in super jump, built in stealth. Mm-hmm. No, wow. she's great. Her combi. Yeah, and for I, your combi's great. I mean, if if you're if you're not if you're not worried about cover anyway, you know what I mean. If you're going to go into the open, and you're just going to lean in your mimetism, a breaker combi at eight inches. If you're fighting a tag that doesn't have a template, a direct template like a flamethrower or a chain cold or something like that, you can actually you can very often it's, you can just shrug those because you have if it's not a flamethrower and you're not going to take more than one wound, just go through it. Yeah, that's the that's the berserk argument too. You mm-hmm. jumped out at the tag. You you started outside of eight. And you moved into eight, shooting it with your breaker. It uses its close range weapon. Might be a flamethrower, might be a nano pulser, might be a riot stopper. Um, 50 50 ish that you're going to just walk through that. And if it's just damage, then it's you're 100% going to walk through it. And then you berserk and just kill whatever it was. Because you're going to hit it. You're going to hit it. Yeah, well, whatever. That's the, that's welcome to the midfield. (laughs) It's just peace trading. Yeah. She's yeah, expensive. Armand, to trade. Armand wants to live. Hippolyta wants to kill. Hippolyta wants to kill something that's 80 points. If she can, if right. you can point her at something that's 80 points, you get her points back. For the sure. tag was the idea. That's mm-hmm. what I was thinking, right? Yeah, tag her one of those like big, chunky size five gunfighters like a Sograt or, you know, the, 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 the big league gunfighters like the Gamma. Or she spec fires a grenade on a 11 over on top of a, a link or a group or something like that, and then uh, walks around the corner and just goes one by one through them in melee. Yeah, she will ping ping pong her way through a link team that's covered in a clip smoke in, or in like any, a turn. Any group of dudes. Like, did you have a couple models near each other? Uh, I put a smoke down on you, and then uh, I super jump over into the smoke and just start killing. Here I go killing again. Yep. Last time I tried to spec fire a grenade on 11, I spent six orders trying to do it and then gave up and then because I just failed and <laughs> I didn't have any more orders. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot to be said for um for for knowing your lane. And I think the the problem with Hippolyta, not that I don't like her, I like her a lot, I think more maybe in Star Mata. Um, it's just that she is a big investment. You 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 almost want to like have her in like the list too. So if you think you're going to be fighting a tag, if you think you're going to be fighting something like that, she's your like pocket piece to come out and go fight. But if I was just to always include a peace trading piece, I think it'd probably be Lan K. He's a cool little 20 point, um, 21 point war band. And he's got all, kind, he's got like a, a toss salad of special rules. Yeah, he's also I mean, impetuous. But he's, he's literally got... discount Hippolyte. Yep, yeah, they half are the, the same guy. Half the points, <laughs> slightly worse smoke, and actually one no smoke. Wound. No smoke. No smoke. No smoke. No smoke. One armor. Weird, yeah. No breaker. He's got no wounding cap though, but not immunity to shock. Yep, and um, shock. Shock is everywhere now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah, uh, not having maybe it's a minus three and no like gun <laughs> it's kind of weird i guess he could flash pulse you not having smoke is weird for him i'm surprised he doesn't have smoke to be honest yeah, with you i was excited about him until i was like wait a minute how do i get him in there yeah <laughs> it's like, it, it's, you gotta have like I mean, a brangian or something throwing stuff around but you can't take oh you can take brangians with him yeah it's true yeah you could actually take four brain you could take two more brangians <laughs> than you could in storm with sarmata and we, and we which, love Varangians. which i think honestly raises the question of why don't I just bring Varangians instead of him? Because yeah, Varangians are just him, but cheaper. With smoke. With and some machine guns. <laughs> or half the price. Half the price with chain or, rifles, smoke, or, heavy pistols. Or trench hammers. Yeah, trench hammers. <laughs> chain cold plus one burst, smoke grenades, heavy pistol, AP close combat, and submachine gun for 13 points. And a uh and yeah, like just send these guys in. Yeah, I think they're they're probably where it's at. The Varangians are the the top shelf lian k is neat hippolyte is amazing but expensive um, I, I think if you want to play that game where you want like a i'm i'm the superhero who's going to run in and just merc half the board just play hippolyte like, yeah lian kai is like i'm also here i can kill a guy maybe even <laughs> two and then they'll kill me 
and then I'll be dead. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a bit like oh, no, Shona. Sh- Shona kind of suffers the same problem here is because she can't duo in yeah. this faction with um with a smoke thrower. She doesn't get to get there, right? Whereas Hippolyta has the built-in smoke or Hippolyta. I'm, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Um, Hippolyta? I thought it was Hippolyta, but I think maybe it's Hippolyta. I'm gonna call it Hippolyta forever and ever. I don't Hippolyta. care what the internet says. Good. <laughs> Good. Um Just like like Andromeda. Andromeda. <laughs> Andromeda. Exactly. Perfect. And a, chi- a chili. Um so yeah, the razor was next on my list with camouflage, hidden deployment, infiltration, min minus six, stealth, surprise deck minus three and train total. He's basically like the midfield links because he has the infiltration. Yeah, and what's nice is if you have a razor or a link, um, you're not giving away by saying turn around and taking a picture because these are the only two models that have hidden deployment in the faction. Yep. Um, and so it could be midway up the field or it could be in your deployment. And so it, it, it forces your opponent, if they know your your faction, to ask some serious questions of like, is it a is it a hacker that's up at the midline that's going to screw up my heavy infantry uh, link? Or is it a sniper in the backfield that's gonna screw up my whatever it is. So it's like, so I, I think it's a, a cool combo that the the razor and the links exist together. Yeah, and it's 120 points effectively for four hidden deploy models. That's a lot of hidden deployment. That's like a Shazvasti amount of hidden deployment. And all of them useful, right? Like the the Ford Observer and Mine Layer profiles, the Mine Layer may be less so because I don't know if I'd love being able to show because I'd show who's who. Well, you still layer. have camouflage, though. I guess you have minus six and then minus three. But does mine layer cause you to reveal yourself in hidden deployment? Yes, that's what I thought. Yeah, because you have to lay the mine within within the control view. of the thing. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So you can't do it if you're not yeah. on board. Yeah, I'd probably just take the hacker instead. The hacker is just like a plain Jane guy to then they're unhackable with shock mines, like the boarding shotgun, and then have them be like these mid range either gunfighter pieces or suppression pieces to like disrupt everything. But there's something to be said for using the midfield hacking to go spotlight some stuff or arrow spotlight some stuff. I wish they had a killer hacker profile. That's the one thing I wish they had that they don't have. Mm-hmm. But moving on from here, I mean, just just to finish off the razor, min minus six is always great. But again, only a wound, one wound and no other special things is kind of like, well, if you get hit, you die. Yeah, you're dead. Because <laughs> you're, you're, yeah, you're only... 30 point <laughs> infiltrating hit and deployment. Min six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which for is, 10 yes. points less, <laughs> you gain... almost identical to every other hidden infiltration. It's true, yeah. It's almost it's just Crocman stats. <laughs> the Crocman being the Pano version of that. There's a go-to killer hacker, which is one of my favorite models, and I almost in every list I keep it. And he it's just came out. Buster. They just came out with a model for him, actually. Yeah, I got him, and he comes with uh, two uh two go bots, the, the mad traps. And so I have actual little mad traps to put on the board instead of camel markers. Because I got so confused about that when I was first playing. I was like, Mad Trap, I have Mine Layer. I put a Mine, I put a Camel Marker, right? Ah, surprise, it's a Mad Trap. And no, we're like, wait, you can't. Like, <laughs> it's not, it's people, just a, it's people just a People thing. telling me different things back and forth. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I bought a I Mine Layer. Don't I put a Mine? How do you know what? Yeah. And then turns out Mad Traps are just its own thing. So. <laughs> mad Traps are like crazy quals. Cool. It's its own, it's a prefer- It's a, a perimeter weapon that's um that runs out and placed in your zone of control. So it kind of walks out and sets itself out, and then it just goes and gives sticky hugs everywhere. Uh-huh. So yeah, but you so get you trade a mimetism. Buster. You trade mimetism three for an MSV one, which is nice. Keep infiltration. You keep mim minus three. Yeah, you guys were saying you trade three points of yeah. mim for yeah, yeah. MSV one. And so then you can it's be like, it's so good. You like you you solve a lot of problems with that MSV one. Like you just like you're half decent. I really like the killer hacker profile. You get a submachine gun, which means you can go on uh, depression to cover something up midfield if there's like an awkward corner that's hard to get around. You're a killer hacker, so you can go murder things that are also there. Also, you can go into uh, imitation state or whatever it's called. Uh, And so it's just kind of like, he just does a little bit of everything. And then he lays a mad trap halfway up the board, 24 inches up the board. And you put it in this tiny little corner that no one can ever get to, and if you get within eight inches of it, it goes beep, 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 and then just crawls around everything and hugs you, and then handcuffs you. Handcuffs you with sticky you. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I, I love the gangbuster. They're a great piece. The yeah, you can get two of them. The 
Yeah, you can get two of them. They're they're effectively your version of um the ever popular uh Moran Masai and Corregidor, uh, which I will talk about a bunch in the future, but they're they're almost like they're not quite as cheap, but you almost start your list with them because they just do they they do all they do exactly what you want them to do, which is to hold a section of the table and make it impossible to go through without either having to clear those things first. Um, and the nice thing about when you compare a mine to a boost weapon, like a mad trap is you don't have to have line of fire that you put them in the least convenient place possible. And they go off no matter what in zone of control and either dodge them with a minus three or you get stuck. Is it minus three? Uh, oh, oh it, it might not be minus three. Sorry, because it's not hidden. It doesn't have the mine, the mine penalty. No. I was like, man, I've been playing right. Just a way boost. <laughs> yeah, it's just a sorry. It's just a dodge. It's just what I find is either your opponent has an answer for them with like a high dodge plus three model, and they come in and they dodge around it and it's fine, or they throw a suicide to the guy into it, but it's still eating up uh, orders. orders instead of walking around. Or yeah. sometimes they don't have the answer to it, and it's just super annoying, and they just avoid that area altogether. Yeah, and, and any of those things are good. Waste orders, yeah. or you know, control zone, or whatever you want it to be. Um, but it's it's great thing you can take two of them. And then you can take two razors, and you can have four models, twenty-four inches up the board, lining the front, kind of absorbing your opponent, which is actually really fun to play. I've played it a few times. Um, and then the next super awesome mid-range is Team Serious. Team Serious, are you serious? Yeah, I'm so serious. So what's up with them? Uh you get a peripheral, which is a repeater. They have four deployment plus eight. Um, and then... It's shoot. also min minus three, which is kind of neat. Six, four. Also min minus three, and it has a heavy riot stopper. So it can't really shoot anything outside of, what, the ten and a half inches that it is. But the fact that you can have a repeater, like, place up the board, where if you go to try to shoot it, it could just goo you. And then if you don't have a good dodge and or... Well, if you're dodging, you're not shooting it. And then if, if you get it, if you don't have a high fizz, a good chance that you're just stuck. And then you're he's trading for a five point uh effective five point uh, repeater, which starts mm -hmm. eight inches up the board, which is great. And you can and you can play that same game where you come around the corner to tag and you're gonna yeah. shoot your boarding shotgun or your submachine gun at it with AP, and it has to decide if it's gonna try and face to face that or if it's gonna dodge. And if it doesn't dodge, it gets hit with a sticky gun. Yeah, and then and then Sirius herself has uh um mid minus three. Also, the four deployment plus eight, and then you could take a red fury. I've never really, I don't really like the gunfighter option on her. Um, I like her more of uh, the hacker as with a submachine gun or uh, or the boarding shotgun. Yeah, if you're if you're rounding a corner with a peripheral, you want to have something that can like dice face to face at short range and make them make the choice between eat the template or fight me. Yeah, what's nice, either you bring in the Ford Observer with the boarding shotgun or the hacker, is that you got a specialist that starts eight inches up the board mm -hmm. and is because you have, if you have like a missile bot or just in general, you don't want to be around repeaters too often because of all the other hackers that you can have, like the cheap uh, Kappa hackers. And so you kind of like push out an area of the board where your enemy does not want to be into or has to spend resources to come and root you out. Um, and I yeah, think the uh, up there. the walk the serious bot with a hacker up and total control <laughs> through your own repeater that you brought with you without having to get close enough is pretty great. Yeah, that's that's another fun thing with the hacker is that you're like you move your bot up into their hacking net and they're like, ah, I'm gonna shut off your your uh, repeater. I'm like, that's fine. I'm gonna go hack something <laughs> that's mm -hmm. that now I can now have access to, and so they don't really see it coming or maybe they do see it coming but it's just hard to prevent like really mm -hmm. hard because the serious bot is fixed form movement as well and they're relatively inexpensive i mean it, if yeah, you're if you're not points. counting the red fury one you're looking at 25 sub 25 points i do yeah. like the smg profile hacker because that same reasons you said yeah i almost always bring it as a hacker but it's it's uh it's it's not on auto include but near auto include and uh it's just just a solid piece and you can take two of them i only have one so I haven't tried doubling up on it, but that'd be interesting to try. The one thing I would say is that when you're looking at those profiles, it is really tempting to spam specialists. There are a few missions like Firefight, though, where you don't want your peace traders to be to be specialists. Right. 
right? Mm-hmm. You want your peace traders to be this just that boring shotgun guy, right? Where if he dies, he dies. Because <laughs> sometimes the throwaway pieces can cost you a couple objective points in something like Firefight where it's killed more specialists. That's true. Who's next? What else do I got? What about the Crushers? Um, the Crushinator. Crushers. The Crushinator Crushers? is a hell of a woman. Oh, we talked about them already in um, O12, though. Yeah. Or in yeah. Starmada. So, yeah, they, they're they kind of in the same spot as Starmada, where they're kind of just a bit expensive for what they do. They yeah, they're all 35-ish great, points. They don't have a great spot. And in, in O12, I think they, they fill the same role of the, eh, we try them out, but they're not like anything like special. Mm-hmm. Unlike the Delta. I do like the Delta, 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 as Cal says. Delta, Delta, Delta. So Delta's pretty neat. I, I have, I have trouble like bringing them a lot in the lists. I haven't really experimented too much with them. They're all parachute combat jump. They're all terrain total, and they no start around. Reference. I don't get that reference either. No, I guess the undergrads reference I just made. Oh, I, I made it for you, Owen. So I don't care if anyone else might get it. That's fair. <laughs> I did know what it was though. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, the, the undergrads appreciation. <laughs> Um, the well, the you'd bot the flying you'd bot is kind of what makes them unique, though. They're the they're the you get that couple. Reference. I haven't watched the grand so long. Oh my god, it's Rocco, and I was like, Delta, Delta, Delta. My oh, that that <laughs> my brain was like, Wait, you do know it, <laughs> it reaches in the back of my mind and pulls it out. It just took a second to dust off ashes. Oh my, oh my uh, uh, teletune, adv- late night teletune. <laughs> That's, references that's like at least 20 15 years 15 years old, old probably at least maybe yeah. 20 years old yeah um but Anyways, yeah the delta doctor us. gets a flying yud bot which uh has there's a couple profiles in in the game now that have that there's um a nazmat like mark ii or something like that that you can get in hawk islam um and there's the zon cats that are engineering version in nomads but this is a kind of neat profile because you show up with a helper bot yeah, or you could just take a regular doctor. It, it's it's a, it's a five point you'd bot instead of a three point you'd bot because it it gets to come in. But the cool thing about you'd bot B, which is five point, it, it has terrain total. And so, on some missions, you can combat jump the little you'd bot up into rooftops to help heal your dudes. <laughs> While before, it just takes forever to get anybody there. You can also combat jump it into the middle of a mine net and set them all off. Oh, that's fine, actually. Yeah, that's what I'd be using them for all the time, is I'd be using them to, like, if someone's just dumped 75 EM mines in the midfield, I'd be using you'd bot B to just go show up and be like, you only live once? <laughs> Hello! I'm five points. <laughs> I was never going to heal anybody, but I can save them from these bombs and just dive on top of every grenade at the same time by putting them in an optimal, like, multi-detonation spot. So this, like, impenetrable mine that all of a sudden just gets broken by you'd bot B. What's cool is you get a doctor out of it, which is in a boarding shotgun, and so you could pop out on the other side. If you don't need too much saving or you don't want to spend, you know, orders trying to bring people up, first of all, you're doctor, so if you do want to, it's better than paramedic. And then uh, um, you also can go push butt and combat jump in wherever you like. Or if combat jump's too risky, if they have... Uh, um, uh, evo hacker and you don't then you can just parachute on the side of the board as well yeah and there's something to be said for being able to just 50 percent of the time maybe more if you do like an assisted jump put a yud bot next to whatever piece you need to rescue immediately right and just do like a do like a care flight basically of dudes uh to go and go and just save the day <laughs> like immediately and then you don't even care if your doctor passes because he's just going through the yud bot yeah, yeah, that that I I I built a few lists to experiment with with Doctor Drop, but I haven't actually tried it out yet. Mm-hmm. I like mean, have the... some expensive pieces that kind of go want to go up, and when they get hit down, you're like, oh well, they're whatever. They leave them alone as a corpse. You know, you don't waste orders killing the corpse, and then uh, and then there's some... teleports yeah. in and goes aha <laughs> surprise. Uh, there there's still something to be said too for like the killer hacker hunting hackers along the sides showing up with um just parachutes walking on and just going and killing. Uh, and there's a boarding shotgun. Panzerfaust is actually the second cheapest profile. Uh, and just having a Panzerfaust show up in the flank can be like a huge deal shooting at a line of fire. Mm-hmm. 
So that's kind of what the Crusher, I tried to do with a Crusher one time, but it was just you pay an extra like 10 points for that profile. Mm -hmm. And sure, you don't get the EMCC weapon, but you're not there to do that anyways. And you don't get the no wounding cap and shock immunity and all that kind of stuff. But if you're shooting someone in the back, you don't care. I'll, I'll, I'll shave 10 points off of that for that. He's going <laughs> to, to die. Kick some back. Straight. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so, so what about the digger? You, you, you've been playing the digger quite a bit. Um, diggers, they're just like, they, they're, they're kind of like peace trading guys, but they have two wounds, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. Um, they're just kind of slightly better Varangians, but without the smoke. So also like a heavy are, Varangian. Yeah. They're like, they're like the heavy troop Varangian. And so they got impetuous, but they got booty. And so sometimes they get some like really fun stuff. Like, uh, you got a Panzerfaust one time, which an ARO blasted some guy trying to come and kill my, uh, my did you lieutenant. Did you notice their burst two in melee? <laughs> they are. I have not got them in the melee yet. AP, APCC weapon plus one burst. Now that's only they're, an active turn, right? They're, yes, but they're natural born uh, warrior CC 21 burst two in melee. Yeah. So, they, I mean, they should win any CC fight they get into. No, oh, they're less swingy. Chance. Yeah. But I mean, there's there's something to be said, I think, for having grenades. A chain rifle, a pistol, and a burst two damage fourteen CC weapon. They also have a natural two, warrior. two chain rifles as well, mm -hmm. which is a really big deal when you're like impetuous thing around the corner or jumping in and going wah, just like putting both arms to each side and like anybody within twenty two inches. You just want to get that motorcycle. Just find, just booty roll that motorcycle and be fourteen points of literally it's, just like ghost riding three times you've gotten you're ghost rider like, ghost rider diggers that's amazing <laughs> just, you just yeah, have being, legs just like transfer into wheels and just, just being eight six with natural born warrior and burst two ap goes up as if it's 14 would be bonkers oh it's, I, it's so fun and, and you get two of them that's the crazy thing you get access to two even though they're mercenary unit you usually only get one you get two of these in your list it is i would only take two four it's not eight six Sorry, but it's um, still pretty good. <laughs> eight four, like a uh, scrub. So but like you can randomly but you just get, move, like, but then you just move dodge. Or, you just yeah. move dodge because you're dodging. You're dodging on four or thirteen, so you just move dodge every move, and then maybe you go six. Yeah, and just like I've got a monofilament on them before, <laughs> which didn't come to play. But whatever. Of uh, what else have I got? Oh, I got the DA close combat weapon. Which enabled him to complete an objective in that mission. Mm. So it was just he would like, get the burst plus one on it, but it'd still be pretty cool to have the DA. Yeah, I mean, it's still there. So it's just kind of like with booty, it, it, the fact that they're only 14 points and they got two wounds and they got impetuous chain rifles and natural born warrior close combat weapons, like plus one, burst one. It just, they have everything you want in a little peace trader that's 14 like, points. 14 points, which is so have, cheap for two have a more expensive version, but eh, whatever. Yeah, 16 <laughs> points. Give them a rifle. Like, <laughs> nah, get, her, get out of here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you've, you're, you're saving the points because you, you can only take one Raven Eye in this list, as we gushed about Raven Eye last time. So just take yeah. the other one as a digger. That's true, actually. The, uh, yeah, diggers, I got to revamp my list. Just fit more diggers in. <laughs> I mean, just, just take two all the time. It's just, just be really diggers good. and lynxes and razors. Like, why do you take anything else? I don't even know. Yeah, all, all your little cheap guys, they, they they fit perfectly the cheap model that trades up really, really well. Mm -hmm. and if he dies without doing anything, it's like no harm, no foul. Mm -hmm. But then if he does any do anything, he's probably going to take out sweet stuff. Yeah. And so it's it's really awesome. And if you're not taking the Raven Eye Lieutenant, what about that Alpha? The Alpha, would you, I would consider him more of like support role. That's fair. Uh, then what about the who else are we going to for midfielders? I guess we're not done midfielders. Uh, uh, the monstructors and the well, we talked about the Varangians in the last episode. Yeah. What about the but motorized to, bounty hunters and the bounty hunters? Okay, so motorized bounty hunters are some of my favorite models to run. I have. I What's have your profile? Whole... There's three profiles. There's an nine, SMG nine for nine points. Nine points, baby. <laughs> yeah, the cheap ones are my favorite too. That's why the chain cool plus one burst, para CC weapon, and the submachine gun are my favorite. Yeah, so it's just like, it's fine. You get the mimetism. You you make them non-impetuous so they get cover. It all depends. So wait, when you deploy, you have you roll booty. Yep. But then when do you decide not to be impetuous? Before or after the booty? At deployment. But that's, they're both on deployment. Then you just pick the order because you act a player. 
You're the player deploying. Sure. You pick which order. Cool. So depending on what booty you roll, you might want to make them impetuous or not. Sure. Which is really cool. because like, I'd never make them impetuous. I would always just choose not to be impetuous, I think. I feel like every bike now is that you always choose not to be impetuous. Yeah, there's not a lot of reason to be. I think unless you're a chain rifle bike, like a coom rider, you're just going to choose not to be impetuous. Like, unless you're just there to be five points. Like, coom riders are just bike riders with chain rifles. (laughs) They're just just going to go peace trade. Uh, There's not a lot of reason to. That's what these motorized bounty hunters, they are. They are in a regular order. And same thing with the, no, wait, are the, are the diggers the regulars? Nope. No, no, they're not. But they are having a tree so they can't get uh, hacked. They're amazing is what they are. (laughs) But no, the, the motorized bounty hunters, they are irregular, but I mean, they're move 8-6. Uh, they got a dodge plus 2 inches. They're also uh, one of your fire team options for 0-12. That's true. <laughs> With Varangians <laughs> and Bronzes, Miranda Ashcroft, and the motorized bounty hunter. So for 18 points, you could have two of these guys flying up on motorcycles. I guess that's true. I never thought about linking them together. I would always link them together. Because then, then you could choose to start them as not impetuous and make them impetuous later. Yeah, they got a double chain colt on that nine point profile, and so we can come around and yep. blast things, which is great. They have a submachine gun; you can put them in suppression, and it's just annoying to deal with. They can be burst to in melee. They can they? Oh, oh, because, because there's they, two of them because they're in a fire they team. Two of them. So you stick Miranda Ashcroft with one because she's also a mercenary, and she's the next one I was going to talk about. Mm-hmm. And you have the little nine point go follow her around. I her. guess it's a little awkward to get them both in melee, but I guess it's quick enough. Just get off the bike. <laughs> or get off the bike. There you go. Because you can just get off the bike and then go fight with Miranda and be burst too with your CC19, CC minus six monofilamental weapon. Oh, CC tech minus six. That's fun, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it's immune to natural born warrior. Dang it. You're making me want to buy all these models I don't have. I make you want to buy everything. <laughs> I have almost the whole pack, but not enough apparently. I know, I know. For for thirty one points, you can have a duo with Miranda, and then Miranda doesn't have booty though, so she can't find a motorcycle. I wish she oh, could. That's so sad. She's a neat profile, but again, this is your your only other fire team option here. You have two duos you can make. Is you can do Varangians with. You also do Varangians with Miranda. Give her smoke. Do Varangians with the motorized bounty hunter, so it could have smoke and advance out of the smoke. And then you could also do the bronze with a Brangian. Yeah, whenever I look at the, the duos in O12, I'm just like, maybe the duo motor is bounty hunter, right? Just run around and do stuff. But otherwise, I'm just like, do I even want to be taking? I want to take Brangians regardless. But so I you just insert Brangian to give the Brangian free orders. Like, that's why I would do it. Because if you're going to take the other models anyway, you just have a trailing Brangian to basically give those Brangian more orders to get up table with. Just think of like slingshots. That's true. That's true. It's free order efficiency for your Brangians. It lets your Brangians take cover. It lets your motorized bounty hunters take cover without you having to get rid of their impetuous. So if you want it later on in the game, you can have it. Yeah, I guess it's kind of like if you, I don't know if you build a list around it, but if you have multiple of the models, you might as well use the duos. I guess what I was going to say is if you're going to take a motorized bounty hunter in list two, then throwing a Varangi on top of it makes it 21 points. And it's two things you're going to take anyway. You might as well just pair them up. Yeah, that's probably the, the most likely one. So what about that Monstrucker? Monstrucker, I like the Monstrucker just because he's cheap. Mm-hmm. And he is a uh, engineer. He's so a poor man's pay. Ermandino, which is to say he's four more points than an Ermandino. And does kind of the same thing, but doesn't have smoke grenades. Uh, the he's boarding not- shotgun 17 point EM grenades, though, is legit. See, I never even thought about the EM grenades. But the EM grenades are nasty. I like because he's he, he is in irregular order. And so it's kind of like if things are on the ground, he's trying to run around, pick them up, and you probably bring a U bot with him to extend his range of, of running around. Um because you can bring a U bot with him, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So he does that. Well, I really like the 12 point version of him. Because first of all, it's 12 points for an engineer, which is great. He's got climbing plus, so he can get to where he wants to be when he needs to do it. Um, but also, he's got drop there. And so, with your irregular order, if you have nothing else to do with him, just throw out a drop there. Yeah, he's a good midfield button pusher, for sure. And he can do Mr. Fix-It jobs, and he can also lay out those drop bears to defend whatever position you're trying to put him in. 
makes cheap 12 points cheaper than your um what are they called uh, lambdas mm-hmm. your support group lambdas uh oh, midfielders oh, the lawkeeper lawkeeper he's also in star mana he is in star mana that's true mm-hmm. uh judge dreads uh, agnes agnes in, ferrera in star mana you're usually wanting to take them in a duo mm-hmm. in uh 12 you have the freedom because you can't take them in a duo you're more likely to take the the bots, side bots the side bots. Yeah. So the side bots are really good and so i've had really good success Normally, just with one side bot because I'm crunched on point, but even with two side bots, it just seems amazing. Um, mm-hmm. like you can, worst comes to worst, you can clear mines with them or just like eat arrows, make people dodge. Like, if you get in range with them, you just shoot that heavy ride stopper. It's just as scary as a team serious guy, except mm-hmm. your, your speed eight on your first movement. So you can just get around and get into stuff. And then, if you combine it with the law keeper, also poking around the corner, you, the decisions to make do you shoot yeah. back? And yeah. Then, so it's you, you can dodge, bring you shoot back. more as a as a as a gunfighter. You bring a red fury with him, whatever, and then he kind of he pokes around the corner and shoots you. But then also you have the little side bot running up and go, well, if you want to get into a gunfight, you're probably gonna lose. Or do you want to dodge and give me a free gunfight because I'll stick you otherwise? It's just it's just really fun. Yeah, decide right now. <laughs> what, what's happening? To you? <laughs> it's bad. It's all bad, and I'm happy. Yeah. Don't crit me, please. Yeah. Um, how about the Ada Swanson FTO mine layer? This is your so, viral mines mine layer for 20 points. So I've looked at her just because I want to try like a spam mine layer list, <laughs> but uh, I haven't yet to play her. But... I wonder why that is. I wonder who you've been playing against who's been spamming mines. <laughs> Nobody who could that be? What kind of person would do that? She's also Shazvasti, but she goes into like Shazvasti embryo state. She right? keeps her points on the board. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of neat. She's got four deployment plus four, min minus three. Martial arts level two means someone can't just slap her. She's also got booty. Ooh, more booty. I love booty. Um, but otherwise, and viral everything. She's a decent bear hunter with viral mines and a viral pistol. Oh, I didn't even see the viral pistol. That's mm-hmm. not bad. Mm-hmm. The only problem with the bears and the antipodes and the dogs and the viral pistol is you got to get within chain rifle range, right? Yeah. She doesn't love. Like, unless you're shooting over the uh, optimum range, right, where she's, like, now at negative mods, there's not a great way to sneak up with her and, and get somebody. Because the viral pistols, the, they're going to be at zero probably at that point. And all the bears and everything you want to boost them against all have high fizz, so they're dodging well around the mine. Mm-hmm. So, it's kind of like... Not nothing. It's not nothing. Like booty armor 5, then you just go in. <laughs> Let's give her a viral rifle. Too. Yeah, he's going to fight. Can I get a viral rifle? Is that a booty thing? No, that'd be too viral. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Agnes is your Agnes is your your weird um, uh, dire foes. She doesn't. I don't know. I don't know what she is. If you really had two points to spare and you didn't have Swick, you can make a slightly worse Kappa, but has six cents. The six cents, maybe super jumping specialist SMG Kappa with a nano pulsar. And BTS six, but BS eleven. She's so weird. Yeah, she and doesn't. And she is... fits. She fits no roles. I don't. I mean, she's a cool miniature. Use her as your rem racer. There you go. What you should use Flight Hunter I guess for her for. She's your rem racer. That's how you moving have to on. Be. Moving on to rem racers. I love rem racers. You get one. There's four flavors. Uh, you haven't used them yet, so I'm gonna go through them. There's an SMG hacker rem driver plus one burst with some machine gun pistol and a power weapon. That's the one you take <laughs> almost every almost every time. You only get one. If you want though, uh, and there's some trolley stuff you can do uh, with rem drivers. There's a basic not hacker one for 15 points just to get that plus one BS. There's also, <laughs> and this is the one where it gets weird. There's a plus one armor plus three fizz plus nine CC. That's 12 points. That's the one you give to Roadbot if you want to be, oh, I don't know, CC 26 with your Paracles Combo Weapons. There's some weird stuff you can do with this guy. The other one's plus one damage, plus one whip, plus three BTS. So you can have like a damage 16 HMG on your Dakini or make a damage 14 um, uh, Oko Copper Bot, which is kind of neat. So how does Rem Driver work? So Rem Driver, you declare a remote on the board, 
at deployment when you're deployed and they gain those bonuses to your stat, their stats as long as you're alive because you're piloting that guy now. Oh, I get it. But you're remotely piloting them, right? You're still a model on the board. You're on the model on the board, yep. Yeah, you're just sitting there with your little Game Boy being like, hee hee. That's it. Whenever they do anything, you're just like, you've, you've written new code for them. You're slightly augmenting them, whatever it is. And that's why I like the Rem Racer with the hacker profile because he's doing two jobs for 21 points. That's true. He's a hacker in ARO just sitting in the back side of the board. He's I mean, BTS like, 6 a... with a deployable oh, yeah. repeater. Yeah. BTS 6 is like, no, he doesn't immediately die. To hack that's him. right. And a deployable repeater. So he can drop a repeater and walk away. There's a bunch of things he can do. If he had a pitcher, he'd be bananas. But deployable repeater is still pretty great. Huh. Interesting. CC22 sidebot is actually really funny. CC22 sidebot, right? <laughs> plus 9CC. Who else would you like to have be? <laughs> CC and then he's also going to he's also going to pair a CC weapon. Yep. To, to give it minus three. Oh my god. Yep. <laughs> There's some stupid things you can do with him. <laughs> Your Yud bot could be CC20. <laughs> my CC20 Yud bot. Whoa, 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 whoa! It's Rem Driver. All those bonuses. Yep. He doesn't get it. He no. Gives it to he gives else. it to a remote. Oh, I totally misunderstood that whole profile. Because I was looking at it before, just I'm like, I don't know what the hell all this is. No. He picks a remote okay. in your army list on the board and gives them those bonuses. Okay, so yeah, so he's just kind of crap sitting in the background. Like, hey, he's got either... I guess the sub is not terrible. But he's never going to stand up. You just gonna, no. You're just going to have him hack. No, no, no. <laughs> right? Like, that's why you give him two jobs. You let him spotlight things walking into your hacking net with his hacking device while he's run driving. That's neat. David but you can also just keep him cheap. Raptor. Yeah. Huh. Oh, you've got mimetism and pretty good dodge. All right. I'll just walk into melee and club you. <laughs> CC plus nine. With his pair of CC minus six. Teamed <laughs> right? up with his uh his controller who's like, once you're under arrest, I'm gonna shoot you with this flamethrower. <laughs> the the problem is is that most things that you can like go into CC with and like maybe win. They usually have like a shotgun or a chain blast or a chain rifle or something that could kill you on the way in. Deva is five points. Hell, do it. To, the Udbot thing is great, right? I might, I might rem racer with uh, with um, what's her name, Fiddler, and do it to the Oxbot attached to her. No, you can't because they're not remotes. Oxbots or remotes? No, they're not. They're synchronized. Or sorry, not Oxbot. The you the, the equivalent of a the U-bot. Udbot that's 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 synced to her. I see what you're saying. The Nazmat, yeah. or whatever you're giving the to the Nazmat her. that's attached to her. You can do that, sure. And then she goes in. It you says CC twenty Nazmat. My CC twenty Nazmat with burst three because the two <laughs> shotguns go in melee too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like. You're under arrest. <laughs> Wait. He just he just walks up swinging the cops around his finger. Could I buff the serious bot? Uh, what's the series? Is it a remote? You it you is. could. <laughs> yes. Interesting. Could I make this work? I don't know. Time to theory craft after this episode. Yeah, I am. So he's he only be, he only be CC seventeen though. He he's not as good. The Yud bot's technically better. CC twenty Nazmat. Nazmat, yeah. Huh. And, we would like all a lot of people get access to these rem racers, don't they? Oh uh, yeah, quite a few, quite a few. The superpower factions get them. Yeah, they're pretty, they're pretty common. I used one, I used one with Yu Ching all weekend, I'm and they're they're great again. for your TR bot too. You stick them on your TR yeah. bot if your TR bot's got decent BS. Now you're like a BS thirteen. You support wear them, so that they've got um marksmanship and you get super high BS. Now, can you switch if you can't switch the? No, bonus, once it's right? once the rem's dead, he loses it. He attached the start of the game. Okay, yeah. But yeah, I'll definitely have to experiment with that guy. It's and cool. he is a support piece, by the way. We're into support pieces at this point. Oh yeah, point. definitely a support. Yeah. Uh, we're we're going we're we're going to skip ahead to the best support piece that they have, which is the alpha. Alpha, alpha, alpha. So alpha, you bring as your lieutenant because you have a chain of command version of him that you get. That's for twenty-seven points. He just take him as your commander because you get plus one command point and you get Strategos level one for 24 points. Uh, and he also has counterintelligence. So just that by itself is well worth the 24 points. Uh, 
Strategos means that the lieutenant order is a regular order to be used in whatever group you're in, uh, command group. And so then you just you just get extra orders for your dudes. You don't need NCO. You you just get a you get a free order to do with what you want. You don't have to hide. Your, you, people know the alpha is the lieutenant if they at least see the alpha on the board. Uh, if they so see five command tokens, they're gonna know he's your lieutenant. <laughs> also, five command tokens. You, it could be Saladin. He's he's telegraphing it. Well, if Saladin's <laughs> not in your army, unless both of them are somehow in your army, and then that guy's definitely not your lieutenant. <laughs> um, but uh, but then he also has biometric visor, discover plus three, and so there's some defense against like smiley faces coming up on you. But then he's also got martial arts level two and guard, which means when someone pops around the corner, he can just punch you. And so I like bringing the alpha and then putting the Raven eye nearby with the EM mine. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, you can come into me, but if you come around this little corner where I've hidden them, hopefully there's a good spot on the board to hide them. That's not super easy to get to. And so you're going to have to dodge an EM mine while taking a, a CC 21 uh, martial arts uh, attack against you. Mm-hmm. He's got BS stack plus one burst too. So you can burst three as light shotgun or double tap as nano pulser if he wants. I've, I've yet to do that. <laughs> I've yet to come up because normally he decides in the back and doesn't need to see combat and and with like a blue coat as well. Yeah, um, you're making like the maximum security zone basically for him to, to like just live in. You put this area where it's just awful to get into and the blue coat also has the biometric visor plus three discover mm-hmm. and so it's just kind of the smiley face level one which Owen repeatedly brings against me is annoying because you're like, I discover you. Oh. But now you're in position, and now you're just a smiley face level two. Dang it! And now you get to shoot my 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 alpha. But other than that, you can keep them super protected, and it's just really hard to get in without them really suffering on their way in. So, so I think the alpha is really awesome because you have the tools to defend him, and also he just he's that perfect lieutenant that hides with his head down on a rooftop or in a corner somewhere. And gives out. Oh yeah, we haven't talked about counterintelligence. So counterintelligence is when you go first, and they do the automated thing of spend a command token. You lose two tokens on one of your groups. You only lose one instead. And so all of a sudden, it's not really worth it for them to do it, and they'll often skip it if they know you have counterintelligence, or they'll get surprised by it and be like, "Oh, dang it! They 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 sacrificed one one order, which you're basically getting for free because lieutenant order without having to have an MPO." Uh, and then. That's anything. And then if you're going second, you get two command token usage instead of just one, which means you can reduce their order limit by two and put someone on suppression or limit their command token usage to, to two that turn or whatever you want to do. You just have a lot more and you just use that extra command token that you're given. I don't know. I think the alpha is one of the better uh, um, lieutenants in the game. Absolutely. Yeah. That is a great lieutenant option. They, they make you pay out the nose for chain of command because you have the raven eye. <laughs> like it's, it's just that simple because you can get 12 point raven eye. Yeah. And then the chain of command guys there too. Like it, it really comes down to do you want the raven eye to be the one that's sleeping on a roof or do you want the alpha to be on sleeping on a roof? I might still take the raven eye lieutenant because he's easier to hide. Right. And still have the back of the face. alpha. There's no argument. I think the, the alpha lieutenant is like head and shoulders for points over everybody. Extra orders like, for sure. Yeah. Like the fact that he got Strategos. If he didn't have Strategos, you'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, let's kind of like debate about it. Because then I got to bring an NCO and I got to do this. I got to do that. The fact that he has Strategos, like, so the only other model that I can think of that is like, oh, there might be one in Nomads that I'm not remembering. But the Shazvasti um, counterintelligence guy can also be Lieutenant. It's the Shukra. It's a... The Shukra is the one you're thinking of at OSS. He can do it too. He's got the same Strategos as well. Does I he think. also have counterintelligence he's, built in? He's got counterintelligence built in, yeah. Does he also have plus one command token? I don't remember, but and close. is he le- the, the Shukra consultant, right? Yeah, uh, you, you get Strategos and you get counterintelligence, but you don't get the extra command token for the same cost. Yeah, same cost. So you're you're just objectively worse because <laughs> you're the same with one less thing for against sure. what you're trying to do, mm-hmm. and then you don't get the like the alpha. Is your size four? Sure. And so it's it's a it, you had a really big fifty five mil base, and so you just harder to hide on a rooftop if there's other higher buildings around. Right. If only your army wasn't littered in mine layer and infiltrators that could start in your deployment and a repeater net and cheap hackers. <laughs> if only like, let let people come and kill it. They'll know he's your leader. You still have Cho who's going to be hiding out there. Like yeah, you have you have a backup plan for the backup plan. That's true. Yeah. You can take Cho. 
because you can always bring show and so like even in the worst situations where they're like i mean you know i am the alpha i know i have the alpha i put him in a spot that you have to come to my half of the board just chain of command it's chain of command counterintelligence and then the same biometric visor and discover but he's a size two yeah but he loses the extra bs attack which is relevant because there might be those moments and guard guard's sweet sure it's an aro defense that most folks can't handle yep and March a lot of two is CC twenty one. Like the things I imagine that would come after him are going to be your like drop troops, your your parachutists, that kind of stuff. No, this guy's a sleeper. the The shooker is not even close to the the alpha. The alpha's got so much more for the same point value. Because then there is one in combined. Shazvasti has the uh, the mentoring company who has counterintelligence. Uh, he has mimetism and decoy, so he gets to pretend to be a token, but he doesn't have strategos and he doesn't have plus one command token for the right. relatively the same points. Like, I, I think this guy is, like, way above. No, if he didn't have another chain of command, like, if the only way this worked was if you brought two alphas, I'd be like, yeah, never mind. Like, bring something else. But the fact right. that Cho exists in the faction, and you can just be like... Hidden chain of command. Here's yeah. my chain of command. It's going to pretend to be anything I want it to be, surrounded by the sea of defensive tech that my faction starts with, because I've got mine layers and drop bears and repeaters and hackers and potentially an invisible minus six camo guy just chilling nearby, and raven eyes. <laughs> four. Four for 120 points, invisible guys, plus raven right? eyes, plus blue guys, plus whoever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, just that's where it is. And I think, yeah, I think that's what Alpha with 20 point Dana Command Cho when you can pretend to be something really annoying to be to go fight and kill, what would that be? What would be what would be the optimal thing that Cho would be to hide and keep the alpha safe so Cho wouldn't die before the alpha? Just have her be a kappa. Just have her be like a plain Jane kappa or a kappa paramedic so that they don't think she's a lieutenant. That's true. Kappa paramedic. Because it's like you're whip 13 and you're a paramedic. And all my guys are like this ten. You're like, go ahead and kill your own guys for me. Yeah. <laughs> so let's go ahead and send those orders for that 50-50 chance of just backline massacring your own troops. Have uh, have your raven raisin eye near or raisin, raisin eye, eye. <laughs> raisin eye, whatever that one. Go get them, raisin called. eye, raven Here's eye. Taste the raisins. Have your raven eye nearby, and uh, pretend to be Aiden Swanson. Get ready for a bad time if you come around this corner. That mine, it could be one of the two of our mines. The problem is, I really like the Raven Knight being near the Alpha. Because well, the, e, the EM mine is a huge deterrent for trying to kill the Alpha. Yep. So there so you I, go. Then I don't you want to somewhere else. Alpha because then it wants to die at the same time. But you, you could just hide. There's so many backline sleeper like support dude. I could just pretend, pretend to be another kind pretend of Pretend to be Agnes Ferreira and be like, I had her in my box <laughs> and I just like using her. Agnes Ferreira. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone just feels sad for you, so they don't go just, near it. They're like, just, oh, you can just Dan. pretend to be a rem racer and not simple, buff any of your remotes. Simple Dan taking the taking the Agnes for her. <laughs> I I look stupid enough to do that, so <laughs> I could to- totally do it. Off. I could totally pull that off. Oh, Dan. <laughs> that could be a support unit lambda. No one will know what it is. No, no one even knows what that is. That no, doesn't exist. Boss. That's right. Doesn't exist. Whatever it is, doesn't exist. That's so funny. To make it a bronze that's just hiding on a rooftop for no reason. You want to go All fight that it. bronze? It's Hector. <laughs> Surprise Hector. <laughs> just, just put Hector. That's actually good for first turn. Sec- by second turn, they'll know. But by second turn, you're like, ah, they're probably not going to kill my up anyways. Maybe, maybe. But you're like, I guess, yeah, you put it as Hector, and they're like, oh, let's go kill Hector. Or like trying to take him out, and you're like, put a defensive thing around him, and he's not even Hector. Oh, man. I love I love that kind of stuff. You could just, and you can choose. Like, you just not Chrono. part of your. Prone Omega on a rooftop. <laughs> like, oh, you've got to climb up here to get me. I have a multi rifle, heavy riot stopper, firewall, minus three. And and here's the thing with, I mean, this is more talking about Cho now, but with, with Cho, you can make her, it's not part of your list what she pretends to be. But depending on what you're deploying against, you can play mind games with your opponent of, like, if you go second, especially, of like, what they don't want to be seeing or what scares them or whatever. Mm-hmm. Here you go. Pretend to be Saladin. <laughs> every time. Like just just That's pretend not... to be Saladin every time. Just 
mind games it won't inside be clear mind games they're, inside they're the mind exact games. same saladin is just 10 points more for no reason and doesn't have counterintelligence and, but why not <laughs> and i don't have to use counterintelligence or let them know i have counterintelligence no no you still have an alpha on the board so you always well, get counterintelligence true. True. which one of them is lieutenant. the lieutenant because they both have, have strategos they both have plus one command token the only thing that might get you is if you're really if they're really paying attention when you roll your lieutenant roll. <laughs> Wait, what is Salad? I guess you don't have whip? to say because his whip is 16. Oh. Uh, you just say whether you failed or not. Do you have to say your whip when you're rolling? What is the rules on that? I don't know. Oh, yeah, you, do. you, have to you have to declare what you're testing on. Nah, oh, you, okay. Never mind. It wouldn't work. Unless, like I said, you just go fast. But not a lot of people play O12 competitively. So. We'll get him the first I'm just going to bet on no one knowing what I do. <laughs> I don't know the whip of anybody. Like always. Who even knows? Anyways, fun options. All right, back to other support pieces. Well, I think the last, there's no more support pieces that we haven't talked about. The only other thing I can think to talk about is the, the Cube Jagger, who's kind of a crossover support piece midfielder. It's your drop troop paramedic. So the Cube Jagger is like the one who's supposed to go rescue the cubes of all the dead bodies. Um, and so he's like a parachutist, med kit, BS 11. There's an SMG or boarding shotgun. The SMG also has an emitter, which is kind of neat. And for some reason, they're all armed with monofill and hook close combat weapons. It makes no sense. He's a weird little rescue guy. Have you ever used yeah. them? I haven't even painted mine, so, <laughs> so I've not actually used them ever. Now that we're making fun of Sorry, names. I was, I was just, I was just sneezing. Um, where, I was dealing is... with jalapenos. <laughs> And my jaggers, your jaggers, jaggers. Wait, what, what is this thing? I've never, I've never heard of this. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh man. I'm gonna play that game with my cube raisin eyes and my cube jagger. Cube jaggers. Jaeger. Jaeger. Cube jaggers. Jaeger meisters. <laughs> sure. Yep. Correct. Correct. Wait, I can't cube the He's what, just a is... super weird profile. It's green I, circle I with black square. Underneath blue coat, above cyber ghost, near Deva, light infantry. Just move, just scroll past, just keep scrolling. It ain't <laughs> worth it. I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, I'm failing. No, I'm keep just scrolling, saying, don't, keep don't scrolling, worry about keep scrolling. Yeah, like, you look at that Wait. cube wagger and you're like scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Oh, there's my raven eye. Sorry, I was confused <laughs> for a second there. My bad. I almost picked a cube. I almost thought that. <laughs> yeah. Why? Wait, is there something before it? Why can't I find this thing? It's, it's the little here. green square, man. It's under Miranda Ashcroft and between her and Casanova. Do you, do you not alpha? sort these by alphabetical? And type? He, you guys know that you can do this, right? He probably you probably go all light infantries no. and then by yeah. alphabet. Well, I didn't know it was a light infantry. <laughs> it's like blue coat, Casanova, oh. cube, cyber. Cy cube Jagger. Why? Why can't I see this? Okay, well, don't I'm worry so about confused. it. It's, it's I found garbage. It. No I one's going to use it. You're not going to use it. it. It's in a regular order. Yeah, it's That's in a regular a... med kit, parachutist, stealth, paramedic, SMG, emitter, or boarding shotgun. It why doesn't. Would you ever... Why would you ever take this? I don't. Know. I know. That's why I said don't <laughs> worry about. You have it. Delta doctors. You don't need to take this guy. There's, there's got... no. There's... He's it... cheapish. Got an Who's emitter. Got... What's an emitter? So uh, it's the gun version of the Emirat. So yeah, instead it's of a, the Emirat, it's, like it's like a big template. It's, it's like, like a gun. flash pulse EM weapon. Yeah. Only it's only good between eight and sixteen. It's a very strange gun that almost no one uses. Also, it only shoots once. Yeah, it's a it's a, it's, oh, a, it's a burst it's a burst one e e gun. Okay. Okay. It's like so a range so taser. So there's no redeeming. Anything Not really. No. <laughs> Any really cost no. swick. We got yeah. sick for no reason. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> for the range EM shotgun. things. It's kind of neat. Because they gave him a monofilament weapon with his CC-16. Yeah. He's like the, the doctor in uh, military orders who's like, yeah. I use this yeah. for surgery. It's actually <laughs> just a scalpel because I don't know how to fight. He's just a really bad doctor. That's what the monofilament is. He's actually just trying to help everyone and accidentally just lops off their limbs. He's a kid that does not use a lightsaber. He just amputates all of everyone's limbs by accident. Um, all right. Well, so let's get yeah. into some. Let's get into some. Like, I don't know if you've been doing what I've been doing, Owen, but I've been tinkering with lists this whole time. 
And I have a I have a 300 point like 012 list based on what we we're talking about that I think is pretty good. Um, it it leans a bit into the midfield, but I think that's kind of, and some of the like the tricksy stuff. But that's kind of what I like in 012. So I didn't take any big gunfighters. I took a lot of mods, took a lot of remotes. It's kind of an ashy list. Um, I'll tell you about mine while you guys write yours. How about that? And we'll put them in the uh, we'll put them in the the chat again in the patron chat so people can look at them. Sounds good. I have so many lists. Which one should I pick? Go ahead. All right. So here's why. So it's a it's a two group list. Um, it kind of has. I haven't organized it super well, but it has like a support element, um, and a main like fighting group. Um, and the main fighting group is a lot of the stuff we just talked about. So it's going to have um, a uh, Raven Eye, obviously. You know, start with Raven Eye and Alpha, because if we're playing, if we're playing this faction, we're probably starting with them so uh, as like the base. And then we've got Cho, who will probably be Hector or something equally <laughs> stupid, um, but probably a Kappa Paramedic, because I also have a Kappa Paramedic in this list. So why would I not just have two cap paramedics and one of them's Cho? Um, then I've got double diggers because I love the digger. I love that midfield piece trading. Um, they're way under costed for what they can do. I've got Nauf with a multi sniper rifle as my like long range pick off the gunfighters. Uh, I've got a razor with a combi rifle for some hidden deployment. Um, I have a uh, Lynx hacker with a killer hacking device and a breaker combi rifle to like mid range gunfight those tags and heavy armor things. A Lynx specialist with a plasma carbine to hunt Link teams. Um, and then in group two, so it's double Lynx, single razor. In group two, uh, I could trade now for another, the like the the razor with the, um, uh, whatchamacallit? The links with them or the links right with the multi sniper yeah. rifle instead of the uh, breaker combi rifle guy, but I kind of like them all being in the midfield and then leaning on Nauf instead. And then the support group is a war core, which is six cents, uh, rem racer, uh, to pilot a peeler with that sweet HMG. So we get that sweet HMG plus one burst and also do some arrow hacking for the Millicent missile launcher. Um, and then a fuzz bot with an Evo hacking device to throw some support wear on that same HMG. So pretty that much like the greatest hits, but no really heavy pieces. And apart from the remotes, not a lot of hacking targets for the enemy, right? Because the killer hacker can turn into a smiley face in the reactive turn. Um, and you're planning on the rem racer being so far back, sleeping on a rooftop, that he's not going to be in any danger of any like enemy hackers. Wait, did you say you can turn into a smiley face on the reactive turn? Yeah, so like when your Lynx is turning back into a marker state at the end of the turn, he just turns oh. into a, he, you, oh, you okay. turn him into a cyber mask so he can't be hacked back. Are you, yeah, you turn on, I thought you were saying you could do it as an arrow. No, 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 no. <laughs> I was like, no. what? No, but okay. you, you could um, use your plus one command token to coordinate turning back into token state for the razor links, um, like trio. They can just turn back into uh, okay. a cam marker at the end of the turn for a single order. And you've got five command tokens, which means you can do that three turns in a row and then also still have a uh, a pair of command tokens for something else who need it. Quick question about motorized bounty hunters as a pair. If you use it in a regular order, then doesn't it break the link? If you use it in an re irregular order? Yes. Yeah. Because motorized bounty hunters only have regular orders. Yeah, so you just don't use their irregular order. You just feed them regular orders I until you're ready okay. to break them up. Well, there's my list. It has been posted with a picture. Look at you. I'll do uh, a picture of mine too. Nine and four. Uh, one of the four is a irregular because the Beast Hunter FTO is, is nice and cheap and I like I an like extra mine layer. I do like that. Um, this is just a sea of garbage that you have to dig through um, <laughs> with a peeler and an Omega doing basically the heavy lifting. And that's it. It is... Hey, welcome to Hack Hacktown, um, population serious bot, and uh, and a bunch of hidden stuff if I so choose, and uh, or at least one with the razor, um, who will be my button pusher, and then I've got my double serious with hacking devices, double killing hackers with mad traps, um, peeler like I said, your Evo bot just turns him on at the beginning, Millicent and Digger are. Uh, 
hanging out around and the FTO uh, Beast Hunter are hanging near the Alpha. And then Cho can pretend to be a second Omega. Because the Razor's pretty Omega, close Omega to that 2. point. Yeah, why not? And so I have one Omega on the left and the right. Hopefully the Lieutenant can fit somewhere near in the middle. Um, and then I don't use them unless uh, unless the Peeler dies. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. other than that, it's just a matter of sniping the spotlights or the isolates or kills and then bombing them. Yeah, this list could probably, the one I made could probably, in hindsight, remove the digger and take a Monstrucker um, and then change out the Warcore for a Yudbot. And I'd have okay. the ability to um, repair all my bots and stuff too, which wouldn't be a terrible idea. Because I found I was like, I ran into this with my my Hawk Islam the other day that like I brought a list closer to yours where it was like a whole bunch of middling or garbagey kind of units that are like, yeah, they've all they're all okay. Like Noff is pretty good, but when someone comes for him, he's gonna die. Um, diggers are like they exist, but they're mostly just orders, but that's kind of all they're going to be doing the peeler's great um but then like dan's like i have a, a, a zeta and then it just starts killing <laughs> <laughs> and they they can't do anything about it um so i i was like i want i want something that if my opponent has the big thing i can remove it mm -hmm. and if they don't have that and it's a sea of little guys against little guys well, I'm going to skew really heavily into middle board presence and yeah. hold it that way. And be really order efficient because very few models actually have to do anything and I can absorb stuff on the arrow. And that's it. Maybe some coordinated landmines, shock mines and mad traps. Yeah, switching out the um, switching out the uh, one digger for a um monster with the you'd bought puts it at 299 and then i can fix all the bots which is if you're going to take the rum if you're going to invest in the rum racer and the peeler i might as well have a you'd bought to to put the peeler back together again at some point because it's going to go yeah. down right it's going to get every turn probably and i just use his irregular order to fix them and just chuck drop pairs the rest of the time i That's i really you. i really love how cheap the monster can be for exactly that i also got to six three hundred is right where i want to be i get to five five two ninety nine i guess you could I mean, you couldn't get the yud bot then i was just thinking you could uh, for one point uh, you don't get a lambda lambdas are like they start at what 14 points i think yeah. yeah so you won't be able to afford the lambda anyway without taking not the yud bot so i think it's and you don't get the droppers then so i don't even know why i would i'd want to be able to throw droppers if the by some miracle the peeler stays off <laughs> you know what i mean and I don't need that irregular to do something. I'll just throw another drop there and litter the litter the deployment zone with uh, with mines. All right. That's so for fair. my list, this is something that I'm planning on maybe bringing to the tournament. So if you're listening to this, this is definitely not what I'm bringing to the tournament. <laughs> this is definitely, uh, maybe, possibly not it. So obviously, Alpha, Cho, Raven, I. <laughs> Everybody's list starts with that. Sometimes I skip Cho. Sometimes I feel I feel risky, you know. Getting saucy. Just take the cap paramedic instead and be like, it's probably Cho. Because you know what I mean? It's like you're probably they're assuming you have Cho. So do you want to invest trying to kill the alpha when he's so well defended? Eh? 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 Extra anyways. mind gamey. Yeah. But anyways, but people probably don't know my faction very well. So anyway, so I have Cho. I have uh Sirius, Team Sirius as a hacker. Uh some machine gun. And then I got a gangbuster with uh, mad traps killer hacker. Uh, I got a Fuzzbot Evil Hacker. I got Parvati with two Yud bots. And then I have two Okos, which are the center toolbox bot, with which they get the uh, the extra tackle wear this season and all that fun stuff. I have two Peelers, which are the total reaction uh, heavy machine gun. And then I have two Kappa Hackers with submachine guns in the back and a blue coat and a missile bot. And that comes with 300 points, 5.5 swing. And so kind of the idea is uh, you get two peelers hanging out and they each get a dedicated dude bot. And then Parvati, because she's uh, repairs on an 18, you 
really don't have to spend any kind of rerolls. There's a really, really high likelihood that you're bringing back up those peelers to fight again when they get shot down, but they'll be hard She's to shoot down. Uh, and then, and then with the two Okos and Team Sirius, you have three repeaters that are running around the board uh, to absorb, and I got three hackers. And so uh, I'm going to spotlight everything on the way in, hopefully, and then missile bot you. Um, I think the list is slightly weak to like. If someone drops a uh, like a smiley face in your deployment, um, impersonation uh, marker, yeah, yeah, impersonation marker, or even like board camo markers running around, um, they might be able to deal with the the peelers pretty well. But uh, but otherwise, I think it's a decent list. And then the peelers are in the separate groups. It's a, it, I'm using it as a nine six, and so. Um, the, 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 the total reaction bots have timing plus, and so if you buff one with the with the fuzz bot, then uh, they can just walk around the board, walking up along walls and stuff, getting angles and shooting things long range. And if you have one on either side of the board, hopefully you can you can find and kill all the things you need to. Mm -hmm. and then yeah, getting have, those angles is so important. Yeah, and then you have a decent amount of. Uh, I guess the Raven Eye and both Kappas are kind of far back to touch buttons, but uh, Parvati in a pin can like run forward. Uh, she's got super jump, 6 2 movement. 6 2 is and, fast, yeah. Yeah, especially with super jump. And then you got the Gangbuster, who's a like killer hacker to push buttons. And Team Sirius is also plus eight, um, although they usually die somewhat early in the battle. But at least it gives them something to bump over instead of just running straight into the. Uh, the total reaction bot. Yeah. So, Sweet. So really, I like really it. I think we all really we all took like a the... we all took a, like an interesting like midfield mix. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. we just have a lot of really good value in the midfield. Mm -hmm. Like 20 to 25 point guys who all have like if not mine layer then they have the bot and mm -hmm. like riot stoppers are no joke. Yeah because you have to be careful. Like, it can, and, it, yeah, it could just happen. Walking into a riot stopper means guaranteed either riot stopper hit or spotlight hit. Mm -hmm. I will get one of these. So, and because like you're going to bring a regular hacker, like I'm, I'm sure. Like, well, they yeah, look team serious. Bring team serious as a hacker. <laughs> Built it. I, that's riskier, but like, I mean, why not? I did. It's like that's why I like that realm driver, man. If you're going to take the peeler, the realm driver hacker just it sits there making your peeler more valuable, right? And then also the doing driver? the spotlights. There's uh, 21 like... points, though, right? Mm -hmm. Is that worth dropping two Kappa hackers for? Um, that's a you question, I, not a me question. I don't think yeah. so. But I, I don't think so, just because because I don't have... But I'll, I'll try to think of maybe how to fit them in, but I don't think I can on this list. But uh, I'll have to maybe rebuild it to try to fit in that mm -hmm. race. Right Two Kappa yeah. hackers turn into him plus a beast hunter. No, they don't. Don't they? Nine point beast hunter with a 21 point rim driver? 20, 20. He's not 24 points plus the 21. <laughs> How many points are Kappa hackers? 12. Well, oh, I thought they were 15. No, no, no. Oh, shit, they're so cheap. <laughs> I forgot they're that cheap. We talked about this last episode. Oh, we episode. talked about that last episode. Yeah, I completely forgot. So if you haven't listened to that how one, the, go how back. The, it's because they have the SMG. It's because they don't have a Kong rifle. But, like, the fact yeah. that the forward observer is more points than the hacker is just so dumb. That's amazing. They're ridiculous. Mm -hmm. They're ridiculous. Yeah, what I actually like ridiculous. about the submachine gun version is, granted, I mean, you can just do a coordinated order of suppression. If you're not going to be, like, hacking a lot of stuff or mm -hmm. things have already been. Yeah, and then you're just an AP combo rifle. And that that includes the Raven Eye as a submachine gun, the blue coat. Oh yeah, the blue coat has a submachine gun in this version as well. Because I I guess I can shave off three points for the blue coat, but but I like him with the submachine gun because then he can actually threaten armored stuff in the sure. late game. Um, and he still keeps his heavy riot stopper, which is the main thing. And he's a launch is kind of like a weird bonus that sometimes is relevant. But yeah, submachine gun heavy. So yeah, so just kind of like I can go cap a cap a Raven Eye blue coat. Coordinated order for submachine guns. Going, wow. You have so many lieutenant options. I can't believe the blue coats also got a lieutenant option. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it is insane how many people could be the lieutenant. Oh, twelve. You're losing. You should just have every list be the lieutenant. It's just somebody different. <laughs> but then I have to have an NCO. 
which we didn't talk about, but I think the the wait no the rack raptor yeah the raptor raptor yeah the raptors well. have it we talked about them last episode uh-huh. but i think i think they're a bit better in o12 than uh than star mata um, star mata because... seems to pick out all your gunfighters and then it your midfield stuff in star mata is actually not that thick right it's like the varangians no. the cyber ghosts andromeda casanova the crushers the raptors and then the raven eye and the stuff you don't get in this list is like the tangu um and the Jackson's. And the Seriously, Jackson's. gangbusters are so good. Like MSV, mimetism, infiltration, oh, yeah. or like pseudo infiltration, mind layers, hackers, weapons, whichever weapon you want for insert your choice of the situation. Like so good. Yeah, definitely. And losing those, like between that loss and not having the alpha, is the reason why I'm like. I don't know if I'd play Starmada. Like the only way I do it is they just do something play. different. They just do something different. Like it's yeah. it, you get access to like you get access to some some Link Hector. firepower. Link Hector is the answer. Yeah, <laughs> Link Hector. Uh, Link Hector. I mean, just like Link Psychops, Shona Smoke. Like there's a bunch of tricks they have that are pretty cool. Yeah, Big the, Z. The, alpha, the mass it, the mass duo smoke stuff is pretty fun. Yeah, it's pretty fun. It's really I, efficient. I tried not playing with the Alpha a few times, and I'm like, why am I playing without the Alpha? <laughs> well, all i'm saying is i i because the Al- yes the alpha is good but double raven eye for 24 points is the same cost as the alpha and equally good. two orders <laughs> and it's so is double equal, raven eye it's not <laughs> so is double raven eye it's three orders for double raven eye because one's a lieutenant order and you've got Perfect. tons of ncos in that list too right no, counterintelligence it's well, one NCO, it's armada you get bixie otherwise it's just raptors and zeta so you're bringing tags is that, is that your answer for the NCO? <laughs> no, like, it's Bixie and the Raptors. No, no, you were talking about in vanilla or oh, in vanilla, oh, right. sorry, yeah, yeah. Oh, 12, yeah. yeah. Your choice of Raptor or Zetas. So well, you... I mean that's why you take the alphas, because the alpha there's less NCOs, right? And you don't care about it because you have Stratigos, but then everybody knows who your lieutenant is. Right. You the... can't bring the alpha in the other one. No, so that's, so the that's point what I'm we're saying. making here yeah. is that there's no reason never or to not take the alpha here. Yeah, they're always gonna know who you are, but welcome to power. Like that's yeah, it's true. Mm-hmm. And, and you're not going to know list. which Kappa paramedic is Joe. <laughs> yeah, no. One no, of these Joe. guys is, but I got to go dig through them. That's or right. I got to just... dig. I got to dig through all these EM mines and mad traps before I get to it. Or hide as a blue coat. Blue coats. You don't want to run into a blue coat. You don't want to fight a blue coat unnecessarily. <laughs> you want to fight a blue coat in a dark alley? It's got a, it's got a big goo gun. You don't want to run into a police officer late at night. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> if the last ten years has told us anything, nobody wants to run into a police you're officer late gonna, at night. You're going to peek officer around a corner license by yourself. And registration, license and registration. Um, yeah, no, that's a uh, that's a real thing. Because like, uh, even the, if, even if you're a tag going against a blue coat, if you're in the heavy rider stopper range, you're not going to dodge yeah. the tag. So you you're shoot. putting your you're putting your life in your hands. <laughs> And then, it's so here, here's the crazy thing, is if, okay, so the first initial hit on a tag with a heavy riot stopper is not that bad, because the tags always have high fizz. But if you fail, which is like a 50-50, then you have to dodge at minus six. And your dodge is usually like an 11 or a 10 on a tag. And so now you have to roll fours to get out of it. And then oh, you're just stuck. Or fives. But still, it's like 25% chance, and everyone gets free attacks against you. Well, you stick them, and then you throw an EM mine in front of them. Right, but his point is that if you pretend to be a blue coat with Cho, unless they're, like, really confident that they can run through a riot stopper, they're probably not going to go for him, because he's not really that useful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's not a cheap piece you can bully. You can't just bully that guy, because that guy's probably going to stick you. And you can't jump in. You can't smoke going to close combat with him either. He's really good at close combat. So you just... With his minus 6 CC taser. With his natural born warrior. Natural born warrior and CC 21, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's just kind of like, I think think a blue coat is a really good option if you don't already have two blue coats. But even if you already have two blue coats, you got three blue coats. Then then, then, then they know that Cho's on the board. You also have Cho be double (laughs) now. There's just two nows. Uh, but you but you kill now. That's the difference, right? Like that's true, yeah. If there's yeah. an alpha on the board, and also if you have now, you need to use now. And so, like, I use now to shoot you. Oh, that other now isn't doing anything. Hmm. Whereas a blue coat, he's just he's just sleeping in the he's back. He's usually room. just sleeping, yeah. Yeah. 
unless yeah. there's an emergency that he needs to get up for. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What, everything else is dead. Well, it's time time to do something. <laughs> Click uh, clack. Time to get right, guys, sticky. It's, it's up to me now. <laughs> That's I can right, close guess... my box of donuts. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. He just Clancy Wiggums his way out there. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh. O12, again, I haven't played any other factions, but I'm having a lot of fun with them. I I don't have any like faction ADD where I'm like, oh, I wish I could have this. I wish I could have this. There's just a lot of fun things to explore. I really like, just as a faction brief overview, all the like EM and Riot Stoppers and like para weapons. It's just kind of, it's a it was a lot to get used to when I was learning the game because no one else knew what they did either. <laughs> it was just like, wait, what are the rules of this? Or what's this? Or like the one local guy is like, oh yeah, I know all this. I'm like, okay, you're mobilized. He's like, yeah, but does that end, end a turn or is that? And I'm like, no, it, it ends when you dodge. It, it's the only way you get out of it. And you had to look up on the rules. He's like, no, wait, that's too powerful. I was like, nope, that's the way it is. And just kind of like stuff like that. And so it was, it's it just, it's a fun, cool little faction um, that was forced onto me. <laughs> by me yeah just he, he i was bad luck of getting a bunch of free models from ash <laughs> forcing me to play and now he's gonna go compete to go to the worlds <laughs> and we're going all the way from zeros to heroes it's like the wizard it's like it's a, a real like coming up from nowhere story he's gonna push the limit wait your dice for a 12 that's, that's my it. advice <laughs> you don't crit every time you don't don't crit time. just, just most of the time <laughs> <laughs> it's no, funny because I as we talk about as we talked about O12, I got excited to talk about the other factions. I think that this is probably gonna be the longest superpower overview that we do because it's the least stuff in common when going through the sectorials, because like there's only one sectorial. I think when we do these in the future, we'll be going through like two to three sectorials, and a lot of it'll be covered before we jump into the final kind of act. Um, but I think what's cool is that there we came up with three pretty diverse lists. It's pretty easy for the three of us to come up, I think, with very similar lists in a sectorial guide. But when you start talking about these main, like, sort of like parent factions, there's so much variation. And we can all be like, yeah, I want to do it this way. I want to do it this way. And I think O12 sits in an interesting niche where they do a lot of the jobs of this game differently from everybody else. It's funny because I was thinking about Owen talking about coming back to the game and being like, ah, all the factions kind of feel the same. O12 is one of the factions that does not feel the same. They have a bunch of fairly unique tools, like Dan was just saying, um, that make them a lot of fun. And because they're not so reliant on their sectorial faction, I feel like this is, if, you, if you're really looking to experiment with what it means to play without fire teams and to play like a parents or like hyperpower, superpower faction, um it was pointed out last episode that there's only two hyperpowers and it's Eugene and Pano, so I'm gonna call them whatever I want. Oh no, now. there's actually only one. There's only one described as the rival. <laughs> I read it, I just didn't care. Just use the right names, guys. There's made up names anyway. Um, let me tell you about smoke dodge. <laughs> let me tell you about small smoke dodge. I, I'm never gonna stop calling it ghost smiley face. Link team smiley face ghost dodge First is gonna what? be <laughs> it's going to be the subtitle of tactical awareness that'll be the sub name the link team smiley face smoke dodge um <laughs> pure link team smiley pure, face. Link, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> pure link team vanilla face, link team. Dodge. vanilla okay. pure vanilla <laughs> <laughs> that'll be our, our ben and jerry's ice cream flavor whenever we finally pure vanilla link get famous team. enough yeah pure <laughs> vanilla link team will be our, our ben and jerry's flavor when we get famous enough yeah. that we have our ben and jerry's flavor um <laughs> but i do think it's a great way to learn how to play this without fire teams way because you've got just an incredible mix of options um and they're all and they all play like a very unique way you learn you learned i think more like interesting diverse rules in your first like four months of playing dan than most people do because most people don't have access to the esoteric stuff that o12 has access to and i think it's really cool and it's it's definitely um it's definitely expanded your infinity knowledge faster than I think it would have if you just I would played say, like Pano. Not to toot my horn though, it is also the case that I've had like mega faction ADD since playing again. True. true. Basically, every game I play against Stan is either a new faction or a new sectorial, <laughs> and they're like wildly different every time. And I, I never <laughs> ask. So I'm like, Dan's just got had, had whiplash Wait, for four months, not being able to like sink into any fact. He's basically just played tournament games every every game. 
yeah since pretty much playing. and yeah, all of them have been wild skews or like um like exploiting specific mechanics like i'm gonna use paratrap paratroopers i'm gonna use camo spam i'm gonna use smiley faces i'm gonna tr bot you you've always been the guy that wants to bare knuckle spar you never want to put gloves on you just want to get in the ring and punch <laughs> just punch until somebody falls down <laughs> there's never there's never been a moment you played like, against five motorcycles what? let me tell what? you what five motorcycles is like so yeah. there is a history between me and owen which i don't think we've got into where uh we and we're played, not going to now we, <laughs> we played i want you to together. hit me as hard as you can you guys are all going to find out in this episode that owen and dan are actually one person and when their personality changes that's when the voice changes in the in the episode <laughs> It's true. We, we weren't supposed to talk about that. No, sorry. <laughs> the, the one about Fight Club is we don't talk about Fight Club. So we both played. Uh, we both played 40k, and then uh, did I teach? Did you teach me fantasy first, or did you? Did I teach. You I I first? taught you fantasy, and That's then you right. got me. Well, uh, I was like, I'm like, let's play fantasy, and I'm like, here's my like leader just hanging out beside my unit. And he's like, I can't in you, and you die. And I'm like, could I just attach? Yeah. Can you just let me know? Your leader's dead. <laughs> Suck it. And I'm like, oh, fuck. So I was like, okay. So it was super hardball. And they're like, let's play War Machine. Haley 2. The superpower shifts all the time. We're going to play Battle Box games of War Machine. I can't wait till oh. you have a kid, Owen, and you just immediately throw him off the dock when he's like bored to be like, swim, stupid. <laughs> so so I did the same thing to Owen. Real life. And then we're, now we're kind of back into uh, to this. And now I guess we've played other games too, but they aren't as crazy. Like, uh, uh, song of ice on fire and different things they just it, i guess you can get punished but it's kind of like i don't know it just didn't feel as bad like it didn't it was brutal advance like also like fan- we both played that separately and then played each other i guess that's true that's true like neither of us taught the other one how to play that game mm-hmm. but it's really so it was it's like fa- fantasy is super punishing if you don't play right war machine is super punishing if you don't play right and infinity is equally i stick by that there's there's no way for a legion starter box to beat a custom haley 2 starter box in mark 2 <laughs> full stop i'll just say it <laughs> <You'll> <laughs> it just can't hell. be done the math will never go in your favor i'll just i'll just die in the cell sounds like a you problem yeah does exactly sound like, does sound like you probably i bought a new faction <laughs> that sounds like you <laughs> what happens. i forgot oh. about that i just quit and started over yeah oh. but no infinity has been super fun i am i'm excited with all these other factions that we're going to be talking about because i'm going to be doing like research and looking at stuff i'm like i don't know what the heck's going on i think that'll be the valuable thing as we keep going through these you'll get to dissect what things can do um and it'll be a little less intimidating when you're seeing it across the table because you have some idea of like what they might be trying to pull are you Very ready for sure. five man, three man, one one, two two? <laughs> That's it. I'm painting blood ball. <laughs> <laughs> try and wander off from the uh, colder than carbonite and try and find the uh, the blood ball tournament that's happening next door. I've actually been painting up my ogre team while we were doing this podcast. <laughs> no, my God. Yeah, at least your priorities are right. <laughs> Keep your priorities straight. At least, at least you only play good games. Good old blood ball. Yeah, yeah blood ball. Is a, is a, a quote unquote good game. I mean, it is. It's the game we're talking about. Blood Bowl is also a good game. All right, so that's going to wrap this first guide. Uh, We're all the way through uh, and done talking about 012, two episodes in. So who should go next? Should I go next or should you go next, Owen? You want to do... Actually, you're getting ready for Carbonite. So I think it'd be... I think you'd benefit from going next the most. I don't. People I do, because it'll help you make up your mind. People will listen. (laughs) <laughs> they will definitely <laughs> listen so let's let's do hawk islam next and let's okay. start with rama task force because that's the one you're hemming and hawing about between rama and what else and we'll end with qk we'll end with your favorite qk will be the briefest we should brief. start with qk because that's the hardest one to justify its existence so yeah but there's no baseline then i think okay we'll 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 do a good bad good sandwich just like good managers we'll do a good bad good sandwich we'll start with a good one we'll do qk in the middle to be like see this is why just and start from the bottom the one get to yeah. the get to the top that's yeah, right okay. go for the newest newest to oldest so let's start with rama and we'll do right that now all week. i know about hack is they have a lot of whip 14 they, they do, do have, i mean they are they are whip the faction if if yeah. ariana's fizz the faction these guys are whip the faction everybody's whip decent i think they start at whip 14 the ghoulies start at whip 14 they're all the, true believers. the bottom is 14 yeah the magariba guard are whip 14 Every, every, the gulams are 14 and the Delamis are 14 everybody's a 14 the they, they look at the monstruck and they're like Ugh. 
13 what's wrong with you you'll <laughs> see when you're like doctor on a 13 yeah it? you look at I the remotes doctor, and you're like oh, i don't open the are... door for less than 18 that's right yeah that's right i don't get in a bed for less than, than whip 18 what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> yeah they, yep. they make fun of the remotes for being whip 13 stupid even remotes. even their dumbest remote who's nothing but a pile of boxes and a machine gun <laughs> he's whip 12 <laughs> he's not really a remote though he's their best friend buddy He's 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 the Sunduk buddy. He's been taught to love. That pile of boxes in the corner of the room. They, they <laughs> just right. stand up. They just stand up and the machine gun folks out of it. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys, can look, like... you guys can look forward to Rama Task Force next week. You can catch up with us um, about this episode on Discord, on our Patreon, and on Facebook. Um, and we'll be back beginning our next faction guide on Hak Islam, starting with Rama Task Force. Um, on episode, what is it going to be? Episode nine? Episode nine. Tactical, we're almost double digits of tactical awareness. Damn. Wow. So thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you guys later. Yeah, bye. Bye.